Good looking young pitcher right there. Good leverage. Stay tall on the mound. Throw the ball in a downhill plane. DP, what are you this doing? This guy's got a chance to be something special. You get ready for tonight's I'm, game. Looking at the starting pitcher. Zach, please, Zach. No, 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 no. I thought it was no, right here. We're looking at Uncle Dan. Forget about Zach. No, no, we're no. going in the way back machine. No, no, it is Zach, please, Zach, your nephew. He started tonight. He's a right-hander. This guy. He's been a pretty good team at home this year. They keep a very watchful eye on their young pitchers. Home run, Kipnis. Big fly for Mike Trout. The Angels have a 1 0 lead. A home run for Mercado. Simba, four time gold glove winner. Roaring on that play. As the Indians maintain their mastery over the Angels, he's done it again. Great power for Shohei. It's a grand slam. Carlos Santana. We launch his one high. The halo shines tonight. Ty, right, you ready? Let's do it. Ready. All right. So it's kind of a family affair tonight, isn't yeah, it's it? Good. Yeah, we're gonna Zach, get please, Zach, on the mound That's for the right. Indians Not tonight. You, Zach, please, Zach. All right, Tay, welcome to the uh, MLB Game of the Week, uh, live on YouTube, a pregame show. Dan, please, Zach, with you. I'm Fran Charles. So we're going to get you out to, to Anaheim uh, coming up in about uh, 30 or so minutes. So we got we got the clock up there. It's coming up. There it is. Bam. So uh, hang with us uh, for the next uh, 30 or so minutes, and then we'll get you out to the game. But first, let's take a look at uh, the pitching matchup and show you what Dan and I were talking about before the show even started here. Your nephew, Zach Plezak, making his 19th start, a goal up against the Jose Suarez. Oh, what a great story Zach's been. He's been a great story. Had Tommy John surgery drafted in the 11th round by the Indians, drafted with his arm in his sling. He's come a long way in a short period of time. A lot of people in baseball right now, we're seeing younger pitchers being, I wouldn't say rushed, towards the big league level but we're seeing more and more of an infiltration of young pitchers throughout baseball and I'll say this the Indians do as good of a job as anybody okay. developing young pitchers. All right so uh, let's take a look at Zach. He hasn't been as great as he would like Dan the last uh, five or six starts or so. No he hasn't. I think it was so impressive early on. Watch the command the, where the glove is set. His fastball command was on point. His best off speed pitch friend is his straight changeup and this is a good look at it right here. He'll throw it to righties. He'll throw it to lefties. If his fastball command is on point it makes that pitch right there the changeup that much better. Great arm speed. Now what he does when things start to go a little south missing the target you see the green is where it's intended to be. Glaber Torres here. Here's another one. This ball is intended to be down and away. It's up and in. So fastball command is going to be the key. This is a prime example. Okay. This pitch intended to be down and away. It's up and in. It's not the stuff. It's been the location. His fastball is good enough. Prime example. Supposed to be down and in. It's belt high up and away. And the White Sox make him pay. His first handful of starts he was great. Best pickoff move in the game. Who has it? He does right here. <laughs> Lightning quick feet. He gets rid of the ball as quick as anybody I've seen. How about this play in Kansas City? Very rarely do you see a pitcher make this play and then this one a oh bullet right goodness. back up the mound to have the presence not only to catch it but to make a good throw. He makes this play this three six one double play looks so easy like he's a first baseman by trade. <laughs> The intangibles, I think, are what has gotten him to the big leagues. His fastball command was so good the first, first five or six starts. But I think he's going through what a lot of young pitchers go through. This extra month, this is September. Yeah. He's been a couple years at minor league baseball. And so his innings limit now, he's getting about where he has been at the most point of his career. And it's a lot different stress level at the major league level than when you're throwing at double and triple A. If he gets back, to having fastball command. His changeup is a plus changeup. His curveball and slider are good enough. If his fastball command is good, he'll pitch well tonight. Real quick, before we jump to the lineups, uh, at some point, not right now, but I want you guys to throw this 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 man's name, Dan Plezak, in the search uh, uh, topic bar here on YouTube. And look at what this guy did. 18 years in the big leagues. was a dynamite closer. What kind of conversations do you have with your nephew? We have, con we have conversations. You guys both got to be on cloud nine. You know what? I sent him a text message yesterday. Hit the glove. Relax. Take a deep breath. Okay. Control your breathing. Hit the glove. And, and the game moves so fast when you're a young pitcher. You're worried about who's on deck, what you've done. You can't get your curveball over. The most, the most, the most important pitch of all time. Most important pitch you're going to throw 
is the next one. Mm. You can't worry about the one you threw. You can't think about the guy two, two batters down the road. The most important pitch Zach Plesak is going to make is going to be the first pitch of the game. And then after that, it's the next pitch. It's got to be unbelievable for your entire family. It makes me see. nervous, though. <laughs> when things are going bad, I'm changing seats. I'm walking all over the place. All right, uh, look at the uh, starting lineups tonight and for the Indians. Man, Francisco Lindor, you want to talk about a table setter. The Indians have won a 10 of the last 17. They're five games back with the Twins for the AL Central uh, Division lead here. And they're a half game out of that second wild card spot. But this lineup with the addition of, of Puig and, and Fran Mil Reyes, this lineup can contend here down the stretch. It is. A couple of key industry. Tyler Naquid went down with a knee injury and Jose Ramirez. They missed those two bats in the lineup. If you would have told me at the beginning of the year that the Cleveland Indians would be a half a game out of the wild card spot with the lineup they threw out opening day, Lindor was on the injured list. Their outfield looked like a double-A outfield the first month and a half of the season. Credit the Indians players. Their young pitching has kept them in this. All right, and meanwhile, uh, for the Angels, it's been a bit of a disappointing season. They're 11 games under 500. They dropped 17 of their last 26. Unfortunately, we will not get to see the best player in the game. Mike Trout has just had a, a small minor procedure here on his toe, so he's going to miss his, his, his fourth consecutive game. But Angels certainly are taking care of business as they try to get ready uh, to see if they'll be able to contend next year. All right, let's head out to Anaheim now. Guy Haberman is a part of the broadcast crew, and he caught up with Cole Calhoun. Guy? All right, Cole, I know a big part of this year for you was proving that the early part of last year was an aberration. You said you're going to ignore the stat line. It looks like you've done that. How? Uh, just working every day, you know, and uh, trying to get better and, and trying to kind of improve upon uh, things that, that you've done that have worked, and uh, it's, it's paid off. We're uh, getting to, towards the end of the season now and trying to grind through and finish this thing off strong. Have you ignored the stat line? I've tried to. You know, I mean, you still look up, and you want to, you want all your numbers to be a little bit better. I think that's that's everybody. But uh, for the most part, uh, a pretty good year. You know, um, something I'm really proud of, and um, you know, hopefully uh, that carries on into next season. Obviously, you spent your whole career with the Angels. There was a team option on your contract in the off season. Have you given that much thought? Uh, you know, it's yeah, it's definitely across my mind. You don't know what's uh, really going to happen, and um, but you know, I, it's something I can't control. You know, I, I can go out and play, and you know, I would absolutely love to be here. You know, for the remainder of my career. You know, but uh, really not up to me. You know, you go out and, and just play, and you know, where the cards fall, they fall. Uh, your whole career, you've been here with Albert Pujols, who yeah. on Monday hit his 655th home run. He's five away from tying Willie Mays for fifth all time. What do you like about watching him? What do you enjoy? Uh, it's it's amazing. I mean, every single night he goes out, and it seems like he's passing somebody on one list or another, you know. And and their names that we all grew up uh, idolizing, just I mean, icons of, of this game, you know. And here we are getting to watch this guy who who himself is a, an icon of this game, you know. And so uh, it's it's definitely a lot of fun. I mean, he's uh, he's. The, the most professional guy out on the field and um, a unbelievable guy in the clubhouse and a great teammate, you know, and it's just, he's, uh, it's been a pleasure really to, to play with him my whole career. Cole, good luck. Appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you. Well, uh, guy, we appreciate it. Back inside Studio 42. Got about 21 plus minutes before we get it out to a guy in the crew here. Rich Waltz uh, on the play by play. Mark Langston and Hall of Famer uh, Jim Tomey. Angels, you know, Coke Hound's in a good bounce back here. Obviously, they have Mike Trout, Justin Upton, Andleton Simmons. But like most teams not contending, they need pitching. They do, Fran. And I think if there's been a team the last five years, that has had the worst luck keeping pitchers healthy, it has to be the Angels. Every year, we're talking about the best player in the game, Mike Trout, Albert Pujols, Cole Calhoun, Andrelton Simmons, Justin Upton. Yeah. You look at that lineup and you say, yes. You look at the rotation and you say, we need innings. Right. They just have not been able to run enough guys out there that it's bullpen night after night after night. And what looked so promising a couple of seasons ago, you look at 2020, and there's going to be a lot of questions. Can they fill those? Would Garrett Cole be a guy, a UCLA guy, that would fit into that rotation? They're either going to have to spend a lot of money or get real lucky and develop some good young pitchers really quick while Trout and Pujols still have this thing going on. All right, let's quickly look at highlights uh, from game one of Monday between uh, the Angels here. 
And the Indians stay what Jason Kipnis he's had a real nice bounce he has back. off to a really slow start in April and May he's starting to hit right now they need him without having Ramirez or Naquin in that lineup they need this here it is Albert Pujols that's career home run number 655 he is now just five away from Willie Mays folks soak it up because I don't know if we're, we're going to see a player like a Pujols a caliber in the near future Yu Chang gets his first career home run filling in for the engine Jose Ramirez another one of the reasons why the Indians continue to hang in there and hang in and hang around and how about Mercado center fielder by trade a couple of weeks ago was playing some left field he's a much better center fielder than a left fielder and he's going to get a chance to play center the rest of the way and Shane Bieber had the whole crew out rooting him on a local kid one of the top young pitchers in the game of baseball you know, a lot of people forget he was the MVP of the all-star game this year. Yeah. He's a terrific pitcher. Well, and, 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 and what about Bieber as the Indians took game one here at 6 2? But man, uh, you want to talk about at the beginning of the year, Indians fans were a little concerned because some of their big name pitches were going down. I know we're going to talk more about the other guys who have come through, but Bieber's been one of those guys. He has been one of those guys, and he's not Justin. He's Shane Bieber. <laughs> yeah, right. No doubt. Terrific. Although he and Justin are boys now. You know what the <laughs> Indians have done? I had a chance to see the Indians last week when they were in New York playing the Mets. I had yep. a chance to talk to Carl Willis, their pitching coach. Watch three guys throw bullpens. My nephew included Shane Beaver. I watched Clevenger. I watched Savali. Okay. Strike throwers. In a day and age where we're seeing how fast guys can throw, we're looking at velocity, right? It still goes back to this. It's about command. Are you comfortable throwing strikes at 92? If you're so, then you throw 92. The harder you start to throw, the more you er erratic you get. Shane Bieber right now has taken it to the next level. A lot of people thought, where in the world are they going to be without Corey Kluber, right? Yep. They lost Carrasco, who's now back into the bullpen. Watch where Perez is sitting. Watch the glove location. He is on the glove. You sit and watch a game. You want to know if a guy has good control? Watch where the catcher sets the glove and where the ball ends up. Wow. This guy is on mm. target. And for all of you young pitchers out there, the game is still about command. It's not about how hard you throw. Look at this. You could catch this guy right now with a pair of snow gloves because he'll hit your glove in a hand every single time. In a day and age where we're so stuck on, you know, hearing guys talk about velo and 96 to 97, it's still about strike throwing. And this guy's a throwback. Look at that ERA, 3.17. In this day and age, this is the most impressive. 38 walks to 241 strikeouts. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, and, and you mentioned it uh, was the MVP of the All-Star Game, which obviously would, uh, took place in Cleveland, so he got a ton of fan support uh, from, from the hometown crowd as well. Zach, please, Zach, making his 19th start tonight. One thing that will help Zach just before the game even starts, he will not have to face Mike Trout. Uh, but no doubt, Trout is still considered by many uh, the, best, uh, the greatest player in the game right now. Trout is one of the greatest ball players we will ever see in our lifetimes. That is out to deep left field. Big fly. Mike Trout continues to do some big damage. He's so good, he's good at everything. Trout is going back. He jumps up and he takes a home run away. MVPs doing MVP thing. Mike Trout, he's the greatest of the great. All right, and I'll look at uh, Zach Plezak as well, uh, tonight's starter here uh, for the Indians. And I'll tell you what, it's been a, a refreshing story uh, because they certainly have needed, needed the help from the rotation perspective. And, and Zach's been one of the great young starters that has come through for the Indians. Time now to play a little game, Dan, that we like to call here on YouTube. Like and subscribe. You ready? Okay, ready. All right, so here we go. We just saw a great uh, highlight clip of Mike Trout. Mike Trout is a better player than Ken Griffey Jr. in his prime. I'm going to say like and subscribe, but only because what Trout's done, we really haven't seen anybody in the history of baseball do what this guy has done. And it's probably not a fair statement because Ken Griffey, in my opinion, was one of the best players I ever saw play. He could do it all, but so can this guy. The only edge I think that Ken Griffey held a significant advantage over Mike Trout, okay. he was a much better thrower much stronger arm he could play a little bit deeper and he could throw guys out at home plate from center field all right uh, next question here uh, like it and subscribe Mike Trout will win a World Series title in his career like and subscribe with a asterisk okay next to it it won't be with the Angels I think it's going to be with the New York Yankees I just don't know where the Angels are going to get the firepower on the mound now I don't my gut tells me that the Angels are not going to be Mike Trout's last team. 
He'll win a World Series, but I think he's going to do it in the Bronx. All right. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. Hey, <laughs> it costs us for some, some reason, that helmet just doesn't fit on that body, does it? <laughs> no. Got to get Mike in the weight room. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, no doubt. All right. So, I think Mike Trout potentially it could be on the move. A couple other topics here to share with you here on Like It and Subscribe. Chris Rowan back. Let me know. What do we got here? The Indians are going to make the postseason. What do you think? I'm going to like and subscribe okay. because I think they're young starting pitching. My nephew tonight, I think that is what is going to carry the Indians. For some reason, I think the Rays are the team that they're, I think they're going to get in. But something tells me that I just like the Indians pitching a little bit more than I like the A's pitching at this time. The Indians are half a game back, enough time to run them down. I think it's Rays Indians in, in the playoffs. And what about these Rays? I mean, we, we were they, with this team during they pitch uh, and spring catch training. It, right? and they, they pitch, they catch, they're getting Snell back, they're getting Glass now back. They're a team that they do what they do. They play in a ballpark where you get lulled to sleep when you go to play down there. They take advantage of their environment. They're a good team. Are they a great team? Probably not, but they cause a lot of problems. All right, and finally, like and subscribe. Mike Clevenger is one of the best pitchers in baseball. Like and subscribe, like times five. <laughs> he might be the best. He might be the best kept secret, not in the American League, but in all of baseball. This guy's a converted long reliever. I had a talk with Justin Morneau about a month and a half ago. We did a game on YouTube, yep. and he told me when he faced Clevenger, he got to first base. And he told their first base coach, what in the world is this guy doing pitching out of the bullpen? Because he, to me, he said, Dan, this guy wow. has front of the rotation kind of stuff. He's changed his mechanics a little bit. His velocity has gone from 94 to 97. But he's throwing 94 to 97, but he commands it like he's still throwing 92, 93. One of the top pitchers in the game. He also is a strike thrower. These Indian starting pitchers don't walk very many batters. Well, and he has to be an uncomfortable at bat, too, with that funky delivery. I He's mean, got that hair, the flow going yeah, all over right. the place. No doubt. He's like no doubt. DeGrom before DeGrom cut his hair, right? Yeah, no doubt. But this guy, listen, terrific pitcher. And I'll say this. Having spent a couple of days with the Indians a couple of weeks ago in New York, these pitchers are very serious about their craft. They throw bullpens. Carl Willis and Terry Francona couldn't have raved enough about not only are they good, but they want to get better. They want to learn. They want to listen. They don't have a whole lot of veteran leadership because Kluber has been on the, an injured list. Right. So they're kind of all learning on the fly. But Clevenger's the guy they all look up to. Zach, please, Zach, getting loose. Our guys in the booth uh, getting loose as well. Rich Waltz will be on the call. But let's check in with Jim Tomey and Mark Langston. Guys? Thanks, guys. Jimmy, here we are. We're getting close to the postseason. The Cleveland Indians are right on the fringe of the postseason. They're doing what they're supposed to do. They're beating up on the teams that are under 500. 62 wins this year with teams under 500. They are 10 games under 500 with teams with a record over 500. They're taking care of business when they have to. They they have, and you when you look at their club, I mean, think about the injuries that they've they've withstood. You know, this year it's been a, it's been a tough go for them. I think what you, what you have seen though is their young farm system has done a tremendous job, and the dynamic duo of uh, Lindor and and Santana has done a great job. You look at Terry Francona, the manager. He's been there in so many big situations. You got to look at that as their driving force, a guy that can motivate these guys. This is a team that's been in the postseason. They've been through a lot of things. Look for Terry Francona to kind of push these guys through. Well, and he has. He's done that. He's, you know, he's a guy I think that makes them real comfortable. They relax. The kid tonight, please act, Zach, please act on the mound. The last five starts, I think his ERA is above six. So that's something to watch. And, uh, you know, the other on the other side, you got Suarez. You got Reyes, who really, really handles left-handers really well. That's another thing to look at. The lineups are out. No Trout, no Albert Pujols in this game tonight. This is a, a team that's trying to play for some pride, trying to make it difficult for the Cleveland Indians. Those are two key pieces not in this lineup. That's a bummer as a hitter. You know, <laughs> anytime you come to the ballpark and you got Trout and Pujols and they're not in the lineup, it's a little bit of a bummer. But I, I think the Cleveland Indians are happy about that. And uh, it should be a great series. You know what? Cleveland's fighting to get in. It's a great time of year, as you know. And uh, it'll be great to work with you. Well, the Indians have been there before. Can they get here again in 2019? We'll find out. Back to you guys. 
My guys, uh, thank you very much here. And uh, yeah, a lot of games in progress. By the way, these are fantastic seats, man. Who'd you call to get these seats in Studio 42? Listen, when it comes to the sporting events and concerts, I'm your guy. Okay, I love I'll get it. you within two rows of the venue. <laughs> yeah, I love Trust it. Me. I love it. All right, so let's go to the ballpark, man. Let's go to uh, Houston first and take a peek here at the A's and the Astros here. Man, Wade Miley got roughed up. He gave up the five run runs, Dan, and his last one didn't get an out. Just got one out tonight, gave up seven runs. 12 earned runs in a third of an inning. That would be a year record. Think about that. 12 earned runs. Friend, you couldn't do that if you tried to do it. And there are going to be guys that are coming into game as pitchers tonight. Position players that will pitch a one two three inning. All right. Amazing. Or raising Rangers uh, Nick Solak. He sends out a shot. Good looking young player here uh, for the Rangers. The Rays they start tonight with that top wild card spot. Uh, still a long way to go. Uh, three to one here Rangers on top. Wild game in Detroit the Yankees and the Tigers. It's 10 10 Didi Gregorius. Oh, I can just hear John Sterling right now. Yes indeedy. See ya. This game started out. Yankees were on top six. Now I think Tigers fought all the way back to tie it up. And it's been a back and forth affair ever since. And Didi, that's his second bomb of the night. Not 11 all. Rowdy Tellez, the Blue Jays. And that ball is deep and it's gone. The Blue Jays got three young, exciting players and Biggio, Guerrero, and Bichette. No doubt about it. Now, if the Jays, like a lot of teams, if they could solve that starting pitching dilemma going into 2020, they could cut some problems next year in the AL East. Mookie Betts with a home run in this one. Red Sox hopes the fading fast here as we take a peek at the, the AL postseason picture. And here's what we're talking about. To Boston, you know, it was defending World Series champs. And for a while, they were kind of within five, four, six games of that second wild card spot. But They've hit a bump in the road, and so it's going to be all uphill here from there. Meanwhile, you see the Indians, uh, they're a half game back of the A's for that second wild card spot. Let's jump over to the National League. The Dodgers with a victory over the O's tonight, and they can clinch their seventh consecutive NL West title. It's a new kid, Gavin Lux. The new kid, right? And this was the guy that everybody wanted. Now, this may come back to haunt the Dodgers. Supposedly, the reason they weren't able to acquire Felipe Vasquez from the Pirates because the Dodgers did not want to part with this young player. If this postseason doesn't go well in the eighth and ninth inning and Kenley Jansen is the reason why, there are going to be a lot of people in L.A. going, hey, we had a shot to get a yep. top flight reliever and let that chance get away. All right, so we're hanging on the bleachers here out in what uh, right center field here in Studio 42 is about what uh, seven minutes or so left before we get you out uh, to the big A. But the Dodgers ended up winning that game a uh, seven to three. So how about this? I mean, I know you're talking about the bullpen back of the bullpen issues here for L.A., but still seven consecutive NL West division title. It's Woo. amazing what they've been able to do when you think about it in this day and age of more player movement. But I don't think anybody in baseball does a better job of handling not a 25 but a 40 man roster. Yeah. They have reinforcements pitching player pitching position players. They have pitchers. They have guys. It seems like the guys that they call up that are having good years in AAA, they have an impact at the big league level. So they're well rested. Think about this. This is a team that when the season started, they weren't at all concerned that Clayton Kershaw was not going to be there opening day. They didn't care if it was week two, week three. They just wanted to make sure that when Kershaw was ready and he's responded with another really good year. Two question marks when I think of the Dodgers right now. What's wrong with Ryu? He had been so good and he's been bad. Kenley Jansen. So they need to find out two answers. They have like two weeks to figure out one is Ryu going to be the guy he was the first four months and Kenley Jansen. Do they have the faith in him to throw him out there for the last three outs? All right. So the Dodgers uh, they clinched their seventh the consecutive uh, NL West division title man. The Indians would love to see if they could catch the twins here. They started the night uh, five games back but still also they'd love to grab one of those wild card spots as well. Roberto Perez is going to factor in either way and he spent some time with Guy Haberman. All right, Roberto Perez 19 days left in the season three teams racing for two spots in the wild card. What's it like to be a part of this? It's fun. It's going to be it's going to be a, a great run uh, throughout the stretch. Uh, you know we, we've been talking about these the whole team you know just going out there and have fun and and whatever happens happens but um, I think Everyone, it's a little bit banged up, but uh, we just got to go out there and, and, and 
play the game the right way and, and play um, the game with a lot of energy. So everybody's in the same boat. Mike Clevenger said it's not just must win games, it's every moment you must win. You're in every moment as the catcher. So what does that mean for your level of focus? Um, I don't try to do too much. I know uh, I got the handful. Um, it's it's, it's going to be it's going to be great. It's going to be fun. I'm just taking it, you know, day by day. Uh, win tonight and then let's let's worry about tomorrow. Um, but uh, it, it takes all of us. I think uh, when everybody is everyone is pulling, you know, in the same direction, that's when uh, you get good results. So uh, we just got to continue to battle and uh, just keep playing the game. I know it's great for everybody to have Carlos Carrasco back. He made his fourth appearance since returning here on Monday. Uh, what has it been like to have him back and work him into the fold? Oh, I'm, we're so happy to have him back. I know he was he worked so hard to get back with us. Uh, uh, he, he got a lot of support from everyone. Um, but it's a, it's a po positive energy um, in the clubhouse that he brings. You know, he's not taking it for granted. So we're, we're very excited to have him back. You've been one of the best catchers in the game this year, 22 home runs. Is this what you've always felt like you had inside you? Of course. Uh, I'm a very confident guy. Um, it was a matter of playing time, um, being consistent, get, getting more reps, and um, and it's been fun. Um, I'm still learning about myself a little bit more. You know, it's it's uh, it's hard the transition coming from back up, you know, to play every day. Um, but it's. Uh, I knew if I had the chance to play um, every day or more consistent, I, I would, I would put on numbers. But, uh, but right now I'm just focusing on how I can help my team wins. Congratulations on your success and good luck here winning down the stretch. All right, thank you. A guy, appreciate it, and look at that lid right there. Uh, very recognizable, Francisco Lindor. You, you know, I don't know what the Indians are going to do. They're going to be in a crossroads in a couple of seasons. You're probably looking at a $400 million player right there. Oh, wait, oh, wait, wait, one more, no, one more time. You're looking at a $400 million Woo! player, Fran. There aren't very many guys that do what he does. Right. He is a power guy. He's not a big guy when you look at him. How many legitimate switch hitters, shortstops, hit for power, yeah. hit for average? And I think the cool thing about him is he plays with a lot of energy, and he plays with that energy every single day, and that energy it rubs off on all 24 guys on that roster. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can make the argument. Obviously, the Indians have done a, a fantastic job pitching, and Jose Ramirez, when he caught fire, they kind of caught fire as well in terms of their ascent in the standings. But Francisco Lindor, he has kind of implored them throughout the entire season. When they got down early, Twins got off to the fast start. He was a cheerleader. He was the leader in that clubhouse. We're going to every game. We're just going to keep coming out. We're going to play every game. We're going to do what we do and we're going to see if we can catch these guys. He, he has that that He's transcendent star quality. He does. No doubt. My nephew Zach has told me on several occasions that he and Carlos Santana right. they come with energy every day to the ballpark whether they've lost a couple of games in a row. They had a 14 inning extra inning game and they're at the ballpark eight hours later those two guys walk in and they set the tone for the entire Indians organization think about this they started the season with Lindor on the injured list right Corey Kluber basically has not even really been a factor at all they lost Carrasco to leukemia he's now back pitching in the bullpen their young pitchers Lindor and Santana have put them in a spot where the, they're half a game back with two and a half weeks to go they're in a good spot uh, we heard from Roberto Perez and a guy Abraman spent some time with him here. Uh, Perez, just uh, what a great job that he has done in terms of commanding that pitching staff, both the starters and the bullpen. Bullpen ERA is about three and a half, best in all of baseball. I don't think he gets enough uh, credit. He, he doesn't get enough credit. I had a chance to speak with Terry Francona a couple of weeks ago when the Indians were in New York, and he had nothing but great things to say about Perez. And he also told me, you know, people are looking at him like, where did this power surge come from? They've always thought he had a mechanically a really sound fundamental swing but he's getting to play more and more and with more and more reps he's becoming more confident and right now he's the all-around package a great call of a game great catch and throw and he can hit no trout or no pool holes tonight but folks definitely stick around if you're an Angels fan to see that man coming up the dugout stairs right there Shohei Otani the job that he has done hasn't pitched this year 
But man, he can swing it. I mean, he's got superstar written all over him as well. All right, so it'll be Rich Waltz, Mark Langston, Jim Tomey, and Guy Haberman on the call. Enjoy the MLE game of the week live on YouTube. Indians and Angels. Enjoy. It's a gorgeous night for baseball in Southern California. Ready to go in Anaheim. The Big A all lit up. It's our MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. And a big game for the Cleveland Indians who pay a visit here tonight on the Los Angeles Angels. Hi everybody, I'm Rich Waltz. Welcome to Anaheim. The Cleveland Indians lost a lot in the offseason. They've lost a lot in injuries during this season. But here are the Indians, a half game behind the Oakland Athletics in the wild card, and five back behind Minnesota. And they've got the Twins in a three-game series this weekend. The Angels were in the wild card race up until three weeks ago when things didn't go well, and now they have to play the role of spoilers. And welcome to Major League Baseball on YouTube. It's, it's your first time on YouTube. Some things to remember. First of all, it's all free, and we're all over the world. We've got a terrific September schedule with three postseason type games ready for you. Two million fans have jumped to MLB YouTube channel. You can just watch it on regular YouTube. But if you're on the MLB YouTube channel, you get all kinds of cool things a bell icon, pop up channel guide, scores, and all of that. And just look at the Bright beaming faces here in our booth here tonight. Jim Tomey is here. Mark Langston is here. Mark, let's go to the Angels first. Mike Trout, you can't do an Angels game without talking about Mike Trout. He's injured. He's out tonight. And the frustrating thing for Angel fans, he's having an MVP year, and they're not headed to the postseason. Yeah, Mike Trout not in the lineup. And he came out of this weekend series against the Chicago White Sox with some issue with the nerve problem right in the ball of his foot. And it's been bugging him. It hasn't just appeared this weekend. This has been bothering him for about a month and a half. Finally flared up enough for the Angels to say, all right, you're going to come out of the of the ball game. But when he's in the lineup, check these numbers out. First, you pick a category. He's first in just about everything, whether it's sabermetric or whether it's old school. Mike Trout is dominating the game of baseball once again. He is well on his way to his third MVP. So now we go to the frustrating part because you've got Trout here with the Angels, MVPs, top five MVP voting since he got in the league, but they've been to the postseason just once. Yeah, just one time in 2014, and it was three and out. That is Mike Trout's postseason experience. Jimmy Tomey, who was in this booth, he knows all about postseason. It is all about playing in the postseason for Mike Trout. It's time for the Angels to, they're going to have to do some things this winter to kind of surround Mike Trout and try to get him to the postseason season to me it all starts with pitching they're going to have to really look at the pitching this offseason try to improve that because you can't do any better than Mike Trout you start with the best player in the game kind of move around from that point Jim postseason three in a row for the Indians been a terrific run this year with all that they've lost this might be Terry Francona's best managing job they've done it with two superstars though that are still in the lineup Francisco Lindor and Carlos Santana well absolutely when you look at both of them let's start with Lindor you know to me he's the face of baseball missed all of spring training and look at these numbers 29 homers 883 OPS last 21 games nine homers 15 RBIs you know when this guy's in the lineup everything goes and he's really the clubhouse leader of this ball club Let's go on to a Carlos Santana. To me, really the MVP of this team. First half carried him, 33 home runs, 86 RBIs, 402 on base percentage. And when these guys are in the lineup, you know, it puts Cleveland in a great position with Puig, with Reyes, to continue that 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 four guys in the middle of the lineup to push them into postseason. Those were the wins. This is the without. These are the, the guys that are not there right now. Now the big loss offensively is Jose Ramirez. He was homering and had a lot of pop when he went down. There's a possibility he's back in mid-October. And Kluber's loss is enormous. But the rotation right now is pitching pretty darn well. 
the wild card. How wild is it? Cleveland's made up a lot of ground in a short amount of time, and they're right there. And with more on that, here's our Guy Haberman. Guy? Hey, Rich, you said it might be Terry Francona's best managerial job. It might also be his most fun, although this is not a position the Indians are used to being in. The last two years, they won the division by a combined 30 games. Now they're in a race down the stretch into the final minutes. Now, he's used to that, too. Of course, we all remember 2011, when the Red Sox nine-game lead over the Tampa Bay Rays dissipated in the final minutes of the season. And so he's used that experience to tell his team this. We have 19 days left. Don't let a single moment go by where you wish you could have done more. Everything we've been through since February, the injuries, the illness, make sure that it is not in vain. The disadvantage is the other two managers that they're racing against know this too. Bob Melvin, of course, has had a fantastic career, several times the manager of the year. And Terry's old friend Kevin Cash knows 2011 very well. He was an advanced scout for the Texas Rangers at the time. He was at Tropicana Field scouting the Rays for a potential ALDS, and he was sitting there when Evan Line Goria hit the home run that sent the Rays into the postseason. So here's what they have now ahead of them in this final race to the finish. Two spots, three teams. Look at the right-hand column, games against teams above 500. You see the eight for the Rays. Eight of those games are against the Red Sox for four, two against the Yankees, and two against the Dodgers. And the great advantage that the Oakland A's have, two games against teams over 500, but those two games are done by Thursday night when their series with the Astros ends. Should be a fun finish. Rich? All right, thank you, Guy. Okay, let's uh, let's get an up to the minute look at the standing. So the Twins are five up in the Central. The Twins tonight host the Nationals. You got the Rays, the wild card leaders, the Athletics, and the Indians are just a half game back. So a rather important game here tonight against the Angels. Angels going with a lefty. In fact, they're going with lefties in all three games of this three game set. Jose Suarez will go for Los Angeles Terry Francona and the Indians and he told us right away I got the same lineup tonight as I did last night and last night a terrific night for the Indians a 6 2 win some big home runs along the way from Jason Kipnis and Yu Chang and here is the Indians lineup of course Francisco Lindor sitting on 29 homers in the leadoff spot Oscar Mercado has been terrific for Cleveland. So has Carlos Santana. Yasiel Puig in the cleanup spot. Jordan Luplo is in left field. Franmil Reyes, the designated hitter. Kipnis starting to get hot, and that's a good sign. Roberto Perez is having a career year as the everyday catcher. And Yu Chang, his first major league homer last night. Lindor flips the donut, ready to go. And another lefty facing the Cleveland Indians. Mark Langston, since Suarez is a lefty. You are a stylish and very successful lefty in the major leagues. Give us your scanner report on this guy. Well, first and foremost, he's 21 years old. This is a guy that probably wouldn't be in the big leagues, but the Angels rotation has been in flux this season, so he's kind of been rushed up to the major leagues. He's probably one of the better changeups I've seen. He's got a tremendous changeup. The problem with him is right-handers. You look at the splits this year. Lefties just 211, 211 against him. Right-handers, 335, 16 home runs. That's been the big issue. To me, he does not work inside enough. That is where he's got to work here tonight. His last outing was against the Oakland A's. They had an opener for him. It's probably one of his best performances of the season. Five and a third, five hits, just a couple of runs. And here is the great Francisco Lindor. Four straight All-Star teams. Settles in, and here we go. A strike on the outside corner opens the night. Lindor to be followed by Oscar Mercado, Carlos Santana. Mark had the, the right-handed bat number against Suarez. You've got switch hitters and Lindor and Santana. And right-handed bats, Mercado, Puig, Luplo. And Reyes, and that's in the glove of Justin Upton. Now the Angels are playing without Mike Trout, foot injury, and a night off for Albert Pujols. So Upton in left, Goodwin in center, Calhoun in right, David Fletcher, and Jared Walsh getting a start at first, the rookie. Andrelton Simmons, of course, the gold glover at short. Luis Renifo is at second base. And Anthony Benboom gets the start behind the plate and here's Oscar Mercado Jim told me this guy has been a, a really nice addition both with the bat and with the glove he has been young player you know made a tremendous catch last week really that saved the ball game it's 
It's guys like they're this athletic ability that I think, you know, intrigues and the Indians love guys like this. They bring them to the big leagues and uh, they let their ath athletic ability kind of take over. And at just 24, Terry Francona told us with all the injuries and all the departures that he's had to face this year, the young players have brought an energy that he's really enjoyed. Francona's had a fun season, he said. That's in the left. And that's a base hit. Nice swing. And Mercado's one of those guys that has energized and really helped out at, at just 24. He has. You know, I mean, as we just seen, you know, when you hit the ball out front and you're ready to hit, I call it hitting the ball in the circle. You know, you get yourself ready. The bat head gets out front. Even though the pitch can be off speed, you still can, uh, can put the bat head there and get a base hit to left field. Nice swing. Yeah, if you look at. Jose Suarez, that's exactly what you were looking for. You're trying to get him on that front foot. You're looking for that little soft contact. He got the soft contact. Unfortunately, it ended up in front of Upton. Now Santana. One of the best strike zone recognition tools in Major League Baseball. This guy knows the strike zone. He's always among the league leaders in walks. He's third right now. In Major League Baseball in walks. His on base percentage is over 400. And I think, you know, for me, I think when you have a 400 on base percentage, it means you're dangerous. It means that you're ready to hit, but you're not up there taking pitches. Most guys, if you look around the league, that, that have high on base percentages, usually they're looking to hit and then they become great hitters. And what happens is then they get pitched around a little bit and you see that. Mercado can run. He's swiped 13 bags and a swing and a miss. Santana goes down. Suarez has his first strikeout. And there's that good changeup that Suarez possesses. That's his best pitch. That's his go to pitch. You have to do work on the inside part of the plate to right handed hitters to open up that outside part of the plate. So this is a good changeup. You're ahead in the count. 0 and 2. Expand the zone. He does see if he gets a swing and miss. We just talked about Santana's a guy that recognizes pitches usually in the zone. It even gets him out in front and over the top. Now Yasiel Puig. The 28 year old. Of course, started the season with the Cincinnati Reds. And the Trevor Bauer trade arrives here in Cleveland. He's a presence in the lineup. Hasn't been able to really get hot as an Indian, but everybody knows that, that Puig can go on a, a three-week bender and, and really light up an offense. No, oh, no doubt about it. He is a force in this lineup, and you have to pitch him very carefully. Power to from line to line. What I love guys about Puig is his energy. You know what he brings to the park every day. You know yes he might be a guy that gets on first base and you know and, and, and steals a base. And for me I think that aggressiveness to, you know, it rubs off on your teammates. When you got a guy out there every day that you know is is playing the game 100 to 110 percent. You know I think that's why the Indians look to sign this guy and trade for him. Ball in the dirt and Mercado is thrown out nicely done by Anthony Benboom who fished it out and threw a strike down to second and the Indians first dies at second base Puig will lead off the second and that's a nice start for a struggling Jose Suarez. Good recognition with the ball in the dirt but Benboom got to it quickly. Yeah you've got to go you can't have that slight hesitation that's all it took for. Right there for Mikado to have that slight hesitation. Once you read it in the dirt, it's you're off to the races. There was just that slight little hesitation that allowed Ben Boone to get it and deliver it. He's got a strong throwing arm and he puts it right on the money. Ranjifa waiting for Mikado to arrive. So for the Angels, there's no trout, there's no pools, but Shohei Otani is in the lineup. He's the anchor tonight, and right now he's struggling a little bit. Mark Langston. Take us through it. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I love Jim Tomey to jump in here from an offensive standpoint. But Shohei Otani, this probably the last three weeks, we're seeing swings of a guy that may be getting a little tired. This is the most at bats he's ever had in his professional career. Guys, are, they're starting him away with that changeup, and then they're blowing him away with fastballs, and they're elevating. Everybody's coming in and elevating that fastball. He's been tardy. To me, it looks like he's in between from a hitter yeah. 
right now, the, the off-speed pitch, he's up there looking for it. Next thing you know, the fastball's by you. And when you sit on the fastball, next thing you know, the changeup, you're out in front. All right, he is the anchor in this lineup with Brian Goodwin leading off. David Fletcher's having a really nice year. Otani's third. Justin Upton slides up to the cleanup spot. Cole Calhoun trying to get rolling right now. Andrelton Simmons hits sixth. Jared Walsh hit his first Major League home run last night. Luis Renifo is in the eighth spot. And Ben Boom, the catcher, will hit ninth. And how cool is it that we had Zach Plesak's uncle on our pregame show? Dan Plesak, of course, uh, back in the studios. What a treat for both of them. Talked to Zach yesterday. And he's been thrilled with his year so far. You see the ERA is under four right now. Give us a, a scouting report. Well, I mean, for me, I love this kid. I think, you know, you look at the all-around makeup and, well, you know, you look at his uncle. When you got a when you got an uncle that's been a major league pitcher, you've learned a lot from him. I love this kid, how he attacks the strike zone. If anything, you're going to see a kid that goes out is really aggressive. And I look I look forward to seeing how his breaking ball is tonight, Mark. I, I think it's something to watch. I think he also has got a pretty good changeup, so let's see what happens. Brian Goodwin settles in. Angels last night scoring just two runs, and they both came on solo homers. Albert Pujols hit his 655th last night. He's got the night off. Jared Walsh hit his first. <laughs> and real good contrast there. Goodwin, 0 for his last 12, but has been pretty solid. Post All Star break. You got David Fletcher and then Otani for the Angels. We're just underway. On a gorgeous night in Southern California. Ball in the air and out of play. Hey, you mentioned Albert, 655, just five home runs away from Willie Mays. And the names, every time Albert swings the bat, he is passing a legend that I look back at the history of the game and Albert. Through his career, it, these, it's mind-boggling when you sit down and you really start analyzing the numbers of Albert Pujols. Uh, they're as good as anybody that's ever put a uniform on. When you and I were in the uh, clubhouse, the Angels clubhouse, and looked over and saw Jim Tomey talking to Albert Pujols, I think we looked at each other and said, there's a lot of home runs standing <laughs> right there. That's a small little group right there that those two are part of. That's off the end of the bat and a diving Ooh, catch. Nice and there's play. Mercado again. This time Puig didn't run him over. And Mercado, a diving catch in the gap. He has been gap to gap, filling up highlight reels ever since he arrived in Cleveland. I mean, we talked about it, the athletic ability and what you can do athletically. If you don't get a good jump, and I think he did there, you can make up for it with athletic ability. And, you know, ath athletes play. They, you know, it's, it's a huge part of our game. Good for him. What a catch. Yeah, and certainly shading a little bit towards left field. Had a long way to go on that, but did get that good jump. Plesak bounces one to David Fletcher. Zach out of Crown Point, Indiana. A 12th round pick out of Ball State. And he catches the outside corner. Bill Welke calling balls and strikes. Tom Woodring at first. Lance Barrett at second. Chris Guccione. Completes the quartet here tonight. Fletcher liner left field swing. and a base hit and he's been a hit machine. It's 152 hits this year. Really nice month for him here in September and late August. David Fletcher this year the heart and hustle award winner and he is every bit of that. He, he is really the spark plug for this team. He's hit lead off for most of the season. And this is what he's capable. You can't strike him out. He is one of the top in baseball as far as discipline, and he will get you on that fastball. This is a slider that he's able to stay back on and flip that out into left field, but he makes this offense go. With, with a level swing through the zone, there was no up tilt to his swing, which I love. Otani to left, stay in the yard. Luke Lowe is there. Tagging at first is Fletcher, and he'll hold on a strong throw in. So Tani with decent contact there. Here comes Upton, and here comes the Indians defensively. Luke Lowe out in left, Mercado in center, Puig in right. Chang is a solid defensive player. He's got the start at third. Carlos Santana at first, Kipnis and Lindor up the middle. 
And Roberto Perez is one of the best catchers defensively in the game today. And here is Upton. 0 for 4 last night. And it feels like Justin has been trying to to play catch up ever since he hurt his toe on one of the last spring training games of the season. Yeah, missed almost over a third of the season this year for Justin Upton. You look at his numbers, they are not just a number, Justin Upton numbers, just the 12 home runs this year. Uh, the, the Angels, no question, missed this force in the lineup. They know Upton is the ability to carry a ball club and early in the season, and as you mentioned, it happened in the last exhibition game of the spring. Hurt his toe, had the turf toe, and missed 74 games. You know, and I think when you miss time, you know, you look at that last swing. I think, I think, you know, at times we can get in and do a little bit of a chase mode instead of kind of locking in on your pitch. You know, it's it's one of them things for me that uh, I and I remember this because I did it. Like when things are going bad, you're trying to cover everything instead of simplifying it and look for an area and not necessarily a pitch look for an area and try to attack it when we get out of that is when we're going to start chasing so Upton with a count at one and two please sack missed outside with that last fastball Fletcher's at first scoreless here and that ball into the seats for whatever reason and the Angels were in the wild card race about a month ago for whatever reason Cleveland has the Angels number. I mean they have dominated. They've won 22 of their last 26 games against the Angels have these Cleveland Indians. Uh, I'd say that's domination right there and they have. It's it's one of those scenarios where the Indians have always had the great pitching staff and that great staff can always shut down the offense and that's what we've seen. But they haven't been close ball games. They've been lopsided ball games this year. Uh, certainly the three games in Cleveland was a lopsided game last night's game was, was not really close at all Angels lose that game six to two uh, the Indians they have just excelled against the Angels over the last it's been three or four years and what's impressive is this rotation which is pitching so well and there's Terry Francona it's missing some big names right I mean right now there's no Kluber Bauer's gone but you've got Clevenger. Bieber who was terrific last night Aaron Savali has been great in his eight starts and then this kid Zach Plesak whose ERA is under four looking for win number eight and these guys are getting the opportunity to pitch in really pressure packed games they're in the situation now they're playing the Angels the Angels are not playing well these are games that you feel like they can't lose they have to win these games they're headed to Minnesota as soon as this series over these are in really important games for the Cleveland Indians. And that pitch misses out, and so Upton works a walk. Since Kluber went down, here are the numbers, the rankings for the Indians' rotation and since May 2nd. All solid numbers. You can see innings, a lot of workhorses in the rotation. Strikeouts are high. Kluber's been on the injured list since the 2nd. Was on his way back and then injured an oblique and has yet to resume throwing. Police act now facing Cole Calhoun. Now, the team that the Indians are chasing in the wild card, the Oakland Athletics, were walloped last night 15 to nothing by Houston. Tonight, Oakland is up 19 to 3. <laughs> what, what, is, wow. what is going on? <laughs> That's crazy they're, right there. They're eating good in Houston. <laughs> that's a top. That's it's only the top of the sixth. Oakland has 19 runs on 23 hits. Unless my MLB at bat app is on the fritz or whatever. That, this is incredible. I think Jimmy's right. The Oakland A's found out where the Houston Astros are having their meals at. <laughs> no doubt. There's a good change up by Plesac. He gets a strike. I do want you guys to notice how Perez blocks balls. You know you guys were talking and I. I'm watching this kid and gosh does he do an amazing job behind the plate. He uh, he's really come into his own and I just I just love watching this kid catch. Look at the, some of these numbers and if you go deeper dive into his numbers he's either first second third 
in all of the advanced catching categories this year and this is really his first year as the full time catcher. Yeah, they've always had a, a really good catcher in front of them. Jan Gomes has been there forever and a talented defensive catcher. So it, it's what you make with your opportunity when you get that opportunity and you're going to be the everyday guy. What are you going to do with it? And certainly Perez is making the most of it. One and one to Cole Calhoun. Pulls one foul. I think it's helped him in that he's enjoyed his year offensively especially with a home run ball 22 home runs that's as many home runs as he had hit in his major league career coming into this season so he's in there every day pitchers love pitching to him he's got a low catcher's ERA and in this day and age if you can pop 22 23 home runs as a catcher and do what he does defensively you're going to be one of the elite guys that's right. One two. Got him. Please sack. It was tipped and held by Perez. So that's a strikeout to finish off the first. Angels leave a couple. We're an inning in here. Now hold on. The home plate umpire Bill Welke is walking towards the third base umpire Chris Guccione to find out if possibly that ball hit the dirt. And the umpire say no it did not. And so he got it before it hit the dirt. That's a strikeout, and that's the end of the first. Let's take a look ourselves. Didn't, didn't necessarily catch it cleanly, but it looked like he, he yep, caught no, it. No, it looked like the glove got to the dirt before the ball did, and that was the thing that sold it to me. The glove was down first. All right, so a scoreless start. Around the league, we told you that Oakland is uh, Oakland just scored another run, guys. It's 20 to three. How about the Dodgers tonight? The Dodgers defeat Baltimore and they clinch their seventh consecutive division title. Headlines around the leagues. What else is going on? The Red Sox, and that's a stunner. Fired Dave Dombrowski on Monday. Noah Syndergaard confronted the front office about pairing him with Wilson Ramos. That's a good Rolling Stones. They're actually out on tour, I think, right now. A double whammy. And that's not good. A couple of big injuries for the Twins. Twins and Indians this weekend. And Blake Snell, one more rehab start before his return for the wild card leading Tampa Bay Rays. No Mike Trout tonight. Trout out with a neuroma in his foot. That's a nerve bundle that has been really painful for him. So he's out. He is listed as day to day. He might be back in for the series finale. Tomorrow night. Yasiel Puig's already had half an at bat. He'll get to lead off. He was at the plate when Mercado was thrown out at second. Jordan Luplo and Fanmil Reyes. And you just those topics around the league, if you look at it, Dave Dabrowski just jumps off that page. He was part of a world championship last year, and all of a sudden, what have you done for me lately? And the Red Sox look like they're you know, not going to make the postseason this year. Dombrowski out boy that is to me shocking. I, I think the same thing. You know I've always have heard wonderful things about what a great baseball man this guy is. He's won in a lot of places that he's been to. Right. It was real. I agree. I, it was really shocking to me too. He built uh, helped build that Marlins team that, that beat you guys in 97. Obviously went to uh, to uh, Detroit. Thanks for reminding me. Sorry. <laughs> we'll have more on that later. <laughs> Here's Puig. He swings and misses. And of course, went on to Detroit and had uh, some great success there. He did. Got to a couple World Series and 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 now Boston and and there you go. So well, the, the thing that stood out from whoa, oh he he dotted him there. You could see the dot right on the the backside of Puig. That one really ran in and Puig is on his way to first base. Well, we talked about it earlier. Something that. Suarez has to do is pitch on the inside part of the plate. When you're a youngster trying to learn that here at the major league level, this one is trying to get it on the inner half, just misses big time. Looks like it hits Puig just on almost on the back side. Almost on the wallet right there, Jimmy. Bounced off. <laughs> <laughs> here is Luplo now. Look like it didn't hurt. 
And a throw over to Puig. Now we were talking about Puig and Terry Francona and how much Francona likes managing him. He did the other day not run out a ball which Francona said it was odd because all the other balls that he's hit he's busted it down to first base and and he told us that Puig has apologized like seven or eight times already and he's had to tell him to stop apologizing. Well I think for me I mean we talked about the energy look look this kid loves to play the game you know he'll do some things where people will go well why did he do it I think I think you know he comes to play the game hard every day you know what you're going to get and uh, I think that's what intrigued the Indians about going out and getting this guy and bringing him a part of a of a winning culture and maybe it'll rub, rub off on a few guys. And with Jose Ramirez out they needed pop as well. And, yes. and he he supplies some of that and a presence certainly in the lineup. Well certainly that's something that you don't run out a ball that you hit back to the pitcher. That is not good. That's never good. I don't care at any level of baseball. And the thing that I like best Carlos Santana. We just talked about what a leader he is on this ball club. He's the one that addressed him once Puig got back to the dugout. And that's the part that I really like is the players have to take care of that. Uh -oh. Loop blow to left and deep. And the Indians are on the board. The pride of Fresno State, Jordan Luplo. Now, this is a mistake right here from Suarez. Once again, 0 2 home run. And this is a changeup that catches a lot of the plate. And for Suarez, we talked about the numbers. Right handers, 335 average. That's the 17th home run he's allowed to right handed hitters and this is a youngster again that just this is an 0 2 cookie right here if you are hunting and you're not even fooled by this changeup he gets all over it 11 of his 12 home runs now against lefties as we noted earlier the Angels are starting three lefties in this series the Angels have only one right handed starter in their rotation Jaime Berea as you mentioned the other four lefties. So Luplo gets him on the board. You know you get into this time of year and uh, you want guys to come up big and he came up big. That's what uh, that's what's great about the game is you never know who's going to be that guy that steps up. Speaking of added pop this guy certainly has done that. Friend Mil Reyes pulls it foul. From the Padres in a three way trade now. It, it feels like the Indians have pulled off like five three way trades over the last couple of years. Reyes combined with 34 home runs and the big fella takes down low. He's out of the Dominican Republic and he's another one of the young players that Terry Francona has said it, it, at first he thought it would be challenging but then he said you know it turns out this is a lot of fun these guys have energy. They don't all know what they're doing yet but that's why I'm here he said. Oh. Scorched to left but foul. And walking around that Cleveland Indian clubhouse earlier today seeing Fran Mill in that locker room he is a monster. He is a beast. He really is. He is a large human. You can see that swing on that breaking ball. That was a hanger that he just got a little too quick on. And for Suarez, keeping the ball in the ballpark has been an issue. 20 home runs now in 70 innings. And he comes in this game averaging two and a half home runs per nine innings. Remember, he hit Puig. Luplo. A long homer to left and now Reyes walks and here is Jason Kipnis and he has shown signs of heating up of late homering last night. Yeah the veteran presence of Jason Kipnis and we talked about it a lot of the youngsters on that Cleveland Indian team but they have a lot of veterans sprinkled in there too. You need that good mix and this is a really good mix. If their pitching can hold up and get them to the wild card game they do have three good starters that they could throw when they get to the wild card they do you know and they look experience plays you know when you've been there and you've been there before I think 
you know, you look at Kipnis, look, he's got 17 homers, 65 RBIs, you know, and he had some big hits back in 2016 in that run going to the World Series. Kipnis a high pop. The shift was on, but Fletcher was towards the line. And he's there to make the catch. Ray is still standing at first. Well, we told you earlier that Oakland, the Indians are a half game back of Oakland in the wild card. Oakland is up now 20 to 4 in Houston. As well, five games back in the Central, but the Twins have defeated the Nationals, shut them out by a score of 5 0. The Rays and the Rangers, 3 3. That's at the bottom of the eighth. And you mentioned all those teams. The Angels are playing all three of those teams. When this series ends, the Tampa Bay Rays come in for a three game series starting Friday. Yeah, the Rays are here for five days, three here, and then two up the road against the Dodgers. Yeah, you look at the path to the postseason, and it almost favors the Cleveland Indians. Their path is a a little bit easier than these other teams that are trying to get there the Oakland A's and the Tampa Bay Rays programming note the Tuesday game Rays at Dodgers is right here on YouTube out towards second Renifo turned by Simmons and that's a double play but the Indians are on the board and they do it with a long homer to left Jordan Luplo just twenty five. And a 2 0 Cleveland lead to the bottom of the second. For in depth perspectives on the game, don't forget to check out YouTube Live's game commentary, which features Major League Baseball, the Indians, the Angels, and a select group of YouTube creators. They'll add to our thoughts during the telecast with unique viewing experience. You can view the, the live game commentary on your mobile phone, computer, and also in the living room on your smart TV. We'll be keeping an eye on the discussion throughout the telecast. Rich Waltz along with Mark Langston and Jim Tomey. Both of these gentlemen have smart TVs at home, no doubt about that. Last night, this young man got to start, and I know it's fun for him to pitch here. Coming over from the Astros, Patrick Sandoval joins us now. Hi, Patrick. How are you? Good. How are you guys doing? What's it like being an angel, having grown up uh, in the shadows of this place? Man, it's uh, it's unreal. It's a life lifelong dream come true. Uh, Playing in front of the hometown crowd, it's it's awesome. Yeah, and you were originally drafted by, by the Astros. Is it true that when you were in third grade, the book report you wrote was on? The St. Louis Cardinals Albert Pujols. Yeah that is true. Did you show him the book report. You still have the book report. <laughs> I don't think so. No. <laughs> what, what was it about Pujols when you were growing up that drew you to him. Um, I, I mean <laughs> the dude mashed. Uh, I don't know. That's really what brought me drew, drew me to him. Patrick Mark Langston here. You're 22 years old. You're in the big leagues. Tell me about what is going on as far as what the difference was what you saw at the, the minor league level now transferring up to the major league level. Um, obviously the, the competition is, is a little bit more advanced up here. The, the hitters are way smarter. Uh, I mean it, they definitely hit all your mistakes and uh, it's just a different level of of competition obviously. All right is this your first in game interview. Yeah it is. Yeah and so the, the seeds that's a, it's a baseball tradition that we would like. Absolutely. I'm, I'm to, getting pelted to, to over end, here. But there's nothing we can do about it. So no. You're holding your composure quite well. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we'll ask you, you know, playing with Pujols, but, you know, playing with Mike Trout, playing with Otani, uh, this is, I'm sure, if you're a starting pitcher, the off day, you don't spend sitting around. You're on the rail watching these guys, uh, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you got a team full of superstars and soon to be Hall of Famers. It's, it's something you want to see every day. When you were growing up as a as an angel uh, who was the pitcher that you liked were there a couple of angel pitchers or Dodger pitchers here in Southern California. Um, I mean yeah going through high school once I knew pitching was my thing you know Clayton Kershaw was one that I was very drawn to obviously a lefty that dominates the game and has been for a long time. Have you had a, had a chance to tell him that or see him or meet him. Um, yet? No I have not unfortunately. Um. That's coming up with a freeway series in, in the future for you. Yeah. Sir. Yeah. 
Well, being in a rotation with four lefties, you and I, we've talked about this in the past, how it's an advantage for you when you have an opportunity and you pitch maybe the third game of a series to see the pattern, to see how guys are attacking. Tell us about that, being a lefty with four lefties in a rotation. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a big uh, advantage to see them pitch, especially if they throw against teams that I'm about to throw against and to pick their brains on what worked for them, what didn't really work for them, and, and what might work for me that didn't work for them. So it's it's an open discussion, and it's, it's really cool. Well, we appreciate your visit, and <laughs> congratulations on getting here. That's, that's got to be a really cool thing. Mission Viejo, Southern California guy, Angel fan growing up, and uh, there you are wearing red. Absolutely. Thank you very much. All right, Patrick, thank you. Bright future for that guy, Patrick Sandoval. Fastball up. Very bright future. Boy, I really like his stuff. His stuff plays here at the major league level. He's got a very good fastball, and he understands the concept of the fastball changeup. This is Jared Walsh, whose broken bat liner ends up in the glove of Jason Kipnis. And what a moment for him last night. First, he got to see Albert Pujols hit 655, and then this guy. Out of the University of Georgia, a 39th round pick who signed for $1,000 homers, his first major league homer. Now, they couldn't get the ball immediately because it was in the pool out there. <laughs> it was wet, but he said, regardless of it being wet, that's going to mom. You know, for me, I think what I notice is how free his hands are. He's getting himself ready to hit, he stayed through the middle of the field, and uh, what, a, what a pretty swing. This, this, this kid's swing is going to play. Now the Angels second baseman Luis Renifo switch hitter he's added a little energy. One thing I noticed about that home run too that was a pretty good pitch by Carrasco that was a sinker down and he went down and got it. Well a lot of minor league home runs. For Walsh certainly. Renifo. In the eighth spot. Typically a lefty will roll that ball over he won't stay through the middle of the field like he did. Nice swing. What have you seen from Zach Plesak so far? It, it, I'm seeing a guy now with a 2 nothing lead, and that is a starter's best friend. The more runs that go on the board, the more free you get on that mound. And certainly, he's had some issues here coming up. Little flare. Can Mercado get this one? He doesn't have to leave his feet. Makes a running catch. He had a diving catch and a great one to start the game. And so we've played two. The Indians trying to keep that postseason charge going, have a 2 0 lead here in Anaheim. Time now for a look at the lighter side of our national pastime in our latest installment of In Case You Missed It. High drive, left center field. Will we see it? That ball is gone. Check him out. There it goes around first. He's got the umbrella. The only thing that would have been better is if he had it in his back pocket and he pulled it out of the pocket and went around the bases with an umbrella. That is awesome. <laughs> Popper down the left field side toward the line. That's going to fall in. A base hit. Bellows falls on the bullpen mound. And into second goes Bellows with a double. Bowers not accounting for that slope and tripped right over the mound. You never know when he can come up and grab you. Oh, Seeger ducked huh? and it was out over the plate. He never saw it. Yeah, that just absolutely locked him up. He thinks it's coming at his head. He doesn't see spin drop straight into the strike zone. There's a liner and a base hit into center. Meadows around third, headed to the plate. Oh. And the throw hit Wendelstadt. No idea what Hunter Wendelstadt is doing on a throw coming towards the plate. He's in the middle of the diamond and gets hit by the throw. That will be not top ten. Back in Anaheim, 2-0 Indians on top. Now Jim Tomey, Indian legend, is working one of his very first in-game telecast as our analyst tonight and for him it, it, it seemed a natural to let him read the disclaimer Rob Manfred's office has given us permission to let you read the disclaimer go ahead okay. Jim told me this copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the office of the, of the commissioner of baseball it may not be reproduced or 
retransmitted in any form and the accounts and the descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Oh, that's terrific. That's a that's a Hall of Fame read. Boom. You know what? I read it once though. <laughs> I know I, I did slip you the card early, but still there's a I mean, look, I've mangled that many times in my career. So terrific. I did on the first read. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Thank you. All right. Now this is a, a this is a great story. This is Yu Chang, a Taiwanese third baseman in the nine spot. He hit his first major league home run last night, and he was just the fourth Taiwanese player in major league history to homer in a ball game. There's always something special about your first. He is 24 in his first big league season. And this is right center field. Scatter report says he can pull the ball with power as well. But he takes that one into right center field. And one thing I noticed with Chang earlier in the game, he looked like he was trying to go the opposite direction. And he jumped all over that fastball down the middle of the plate, did not pull it. And he rolls that one into center field for a hit. So a leadoff hit here in the third. And the Indians now have Lindor, Mercado, and Santana coming up. I think what you're seeing with a lot of young guys today is they're really staying through the middle of the field. You know, even if the ball's inside, if the bad head gets there, you can stay square, keep everything level, and, and have that approach. If you cheat a little bit and get out front, you can pull the ball. And you saw where Simmons was playing, and that plays to the scouting report that we have on him and that he has pull power and does pull the ball. Yep. They didn't do the complete shift. They kept Renhifo at on that right side of the infield, created that space up the middle, and that was one of those balls that Simmons was running as hard as he could after and could not catch up. That's Lind twice in this game that Suarez has made good pitches, had soft contact, but no defender to be able to make a play. Lindora fly ball out in the first. He's trying to get to 30 home runs. Certainly he'll do that. He's sitting at 29. And Lindor is a guy that is. He's obviously a switcher and he's tough to shift too, Because he's a guy that can. Go line to line from either side of the plate. Four consecutive all star teams. Has won a gold glove, has won a couple of silver sluggers. His last two years have been immense. And here's an example of where he can go. His spray chart, extra base hits since July 19th. There's the doubles. Mesmerizing, isn't it? That's what they call line to, line to line right there. That is covering all the entire field right there. It's doing it all. I, I was just referencing the bright colors and the, <laughs> and, and the high arcs, but the last 50 games, 14 home runs. Well, see the slugging percentage. When you're trying to get to the postseason, you need your big boys to step up, and certainly Lindor, Carlos Santana, those guys are stepping up. Does so many good things. Terry Francona was telling us today it wasn't about what he does with the bat. It wasn't what he does with the glove which he's you know top of the charts in both of those but his leadership in the clubhouse and he's one of those players like Santana you mentioned Santana with Puig Lindor is one of those players that polices the others that leads by example and if someone doesn't do it the, the right correct way he will remind him of that. You know and I think Michael Brantley when he was here he had a big influence on Lindor you know what he did and just how he went about his game you're now seeing Lindor kind of kind of take that from from Brantley and and apply that to his teammates to his game. 
and uh, he's been a he's been a big leader for them. And he's you know he's one of the top three faces in baseball I think. Reaches out Simmons so good around the bag uncorks but not in time. There I don't think is a stronger shortstop arm than Andleton Simmons and he tried to. Get the double play himself. And here is Mercado now Mercado made the great diving catch early tonight. This was last night up against the wall. In a ballpark he's not familiar with. Shane Bieber liked it and this was tonight to start the game. According to Statcast, that's a four star. Catch and I believe it's a four star catch on TripAdvisor as well. And you looked at both of them. Both of them were really good jumps on the baseball. That's how those plays are made. When you make great plays, you have to get a good jump on it. Jimmy talked about it when you have athletic ability, which he does. That sometimes can overplay it. But both those plays, he got really good jumps on balls that were this one tonight was not hit well. It was off the end of the bat. That one last night was hit well. Looked like it was destined to get to the gap, and he was able to close it and make a real nice catch. Three infielders on the on the left side. Indians will run and with success, especially Lindor. He's 21 of 25 this year. Suarez gets a strike and it's 0 and 1. Suarez has allowed eight stolen bases this year and he does have three pickoffs. He's got a very good move and it's a borderline move where it could be a Bach. It's something that umpires are going to take a real close hard look at it because it you have that imaginary 45 degree line on the mound. And he gets real darn close to this on being a Bach. Awful news tonight out of Milwaukee. National League MVP candidate and last year's MVP Christian Yelich is out for the season after breaking his kneecap on a foul ball. That's oh, the re man. report that just uh, cleared. <coughs> Yelich, a Southern California guy, fractured kneecap. Well, the Angels experienced something like that earlier in the year. Tommy Lastella, same scenario, fouling a ball off. Mercado with a high pop up. Simmons is under it. Yeah you, you can protect your foot with a pad your shin but you really can't do anything for the kneecap or the shin that with a ball coming down like that. And he has been out for since July 2nd has not come back he's closing the gap he's starting to take some live swings but right here and Tommy Lastella having a career year this year 16 home runs an all star season all star season and that was it's a big blow. Here's Santana. Another injury for the Angels. Zach Cozart is a guy that had the same injury early in his career in Cincinnati. Broken kneecap on a foul ball. Santana struck out back in the first. You know you look at Yelich you look at what happened to Baez with the Cubs. It's truly amazing what Ripken did in his career. You know for all those years you know we all get those little nagging injuries but uh, you know you play the game and sometimes you're just dealt a bad card and you know it's why it's why guys in spring training you got to come to spring training you got to be ready to go you got to you always got to you know think when you're in the minor leagues I'm always a call away from being at the big league level and you hate to see that you hate to hear it and just a tough thing for uh, for the Brewers. No swing and Santana walks. Lindor is going to end up down at second. And, and here comes Puig. And for the Brewers too, who are right on the cusp of trying. Oh, he got him on the foot. And that breaking ball catches that back foot. You're always taught throw that ball down towards the back foot. This one actually does catch the back foot of Santana. But you look at the Milwaukee Brewers trying to get into the postseason made such a great run last year to get into the postseason chase the Cubs down. 
and losing Christian Yelich is just a devastating blow. Milwaukee five and a half games back of the National League wild card. Let me amend that. They're a game and a half back. They're five and a half back in the division. So they're still right there if they can overcome that injury though. Suarez gets a strike on Puig. Suarez hit Puig. In the first pitch back in the second inning Puig had half of an at bat so to speak in the first he was there when Mercado was thrown out at second. So this feels like his third at bat of the night already. He's in a situation that Jose Suarez has really struggled this year with two outs teams are hitting 349 against him. He's allowed nine home runs with two outs and 24 of his 48 runs coming into this game have come with two outs. He's only 21 he spent five years in the minors. And as Brad Osmus told us. He's going to have success. He's got to establish in because the changeup is a good pitch, but it, if he can't throw the fastball for a strike on the inside part, it loses its, its bite, loses its effectiveness. Week takes in. You can see it missed. Well, another factor with Suarez too early in the season, they knew that they found out he was tipping his pitches. They're watching it, and you know, as a pitcher. When you set a guy up and you execute a really good pitch and you don't get a swing on that that's when all the lights go off and go uh oh I am tipping something the Angels found that and they've been working with him trying to get better at that and those are things at the minor league level that may not be as prevalent but when you get to the big league level it is rampant uh, I remember sitting in that dugout with the Angels and got Puig again Puig gets hit again. And certainly he's not trying to throw it Puig to load the bases up here. That doesn't make it feel any better if you're Puig. And he's moving gingerly down the first baseline. Terry Francona is out to check on him. And at the same time it, it gives him a, a chance to give a piece of his mind to Bill Welke. Puig and Suarez motioning at each other. And nice job by Francona to escort him down to first. Now both this both bullpens are starting to enter the field. But 300 feet away things have calmed down. Look at <laughs> that's a, a it's comical. As it there's, I've never seen that before. There's <laughs> where two teams are coming out in the same. The gates are open, yeah. but they're just standing and there waiting. They're just for standing, and it's That's September, so each bullpen's right. got like 14 guys right. in it. And now they will exchange pleasantries in the runway there. Puig safely to first. Again, this is a, you've got to understand the circumstances here. This is a 21-year-old pitcher that probably, again, should not be at the major league level. He's been trying desperately to throw the ball in the inner half of the plate, and this is another one. It's unfortunate. It's Puig back to back. This is another fastball. You can see that Ben Boom is set up on the inside part of the plate. Just missed location badly. This one catches that front left the knee cap. Week. Yeah. And both speaking of both dugouts have been warned. Both bullpens have been <laughs> empty, but now they're filled up. There's the the one that catches Puig. And the one that hit him in the in the back was one he just couldn't escape because that that one was near the the back of the batter's box. You know, again, for Suarez, he is. Uh, and that's he has to pitch inside. This has been something, and you can see a byproduct of not really knowing how to pitch inside. And well, now he has to face Luplo, who took him out for a two-run homer after Puig was hit in the second, and the bases are filled with Indians with two outs. You know you could see Puig's frustration he gets drilled his first two times up you know even though the kid is probably trying to uh, try and two pitch inside but as a hitter you know you get drilled your first two times up doesn't feel good no it doesn't 
Definitely. And the first one was almost behind him. That's, right. That's when you're really going, wait, wait a minute. And the second one gets you on that kneecap. Luplo takes a strike. Luplo was the Mountain West Conference Player of the Year at Fresno State. And that was in, in 2014. And he had lost to his teammate in 13. Pretty good power hitter named Aaron Judge who was playing at Fresno State. This is his best major league season. Parts of three years in the big leagues. Originally in the Pirates organization and a patient at bat here. And the Indians certainly can add on. With two outs the bags loaded and a two two count. This right here is a 25 pitch inning for Suarez. He's throwing a lot, and that is going to get some action in the Angels' bullpen. It's a big at bat right here. Yep. It's out of play. Well, we talked about the struggles with Suarez with. Two outs. He's had some issues with that, and it's right now he's a pitch away from getting out of this, but also a pitch away from probably maybe coming out of this game. Lindor, Santana, and there's Puig. We've been told it's the first time Puig's been hit twice in a game, which is hard to believe yeah. with, with Madison Bumgarner and all, <laughs> all that went on with the Dodgers. But Luplo takes out Suarez deep in this inning. Angels bullpen active when they all charged to the door and were stopped. Active now because their young 21 year old lefty is struggling. Jose Rodriguez is up in the bullpen. Pull count three and two. Runners on the move. Bags loaded, two outs. Indians trying to add to the 2 0 lead, and the pitch is up and out. And Luplo has driven in all three runs tonight, a bases loaded walk, and that brings up big Fran Mil Reyes. And I'm sure Brad Osmus right now is hopeful his bullpen can get loose very quickly. Yeah, this is Suarez is coming off probably his best appearance of the season, and that was Oakland. In Oakland last Thursday, where he went five and a third, five hits, a couple of runs, a couple of walks. This one is turning out to be a very difficult start. Again, Indians, a base hit here could really blow open this game. Luplo's three RBIs matches a career high. Reyes walked in the second. He's got 34 home runs, and he rifles one fair into the corner, and that's going to score a bunch. Santana's in. Puig limps in. Luplo will score. And just like that, Cleveland has a huge inning and a 6 0 lead. I was going to say, Fran Mir really, really handles left handed pitching very well. And this is a changeup that he might have been a click in front of it, but still keeps his hands back just enough. Hits this ball hard down in that left field corner with two outs, guys going on contact right here, and he clears the bases. And the troubles with two outs for Jose Suarez appear again here tonight. So base is clearing. Three run double. Kipnis now who popped out back in the second. And the Indians dominance of the Angels. No real way to explain it continues here tonight. It's early but it's six nothing. Yeah they've, and they've done it with a combination of great pitching and timely clutch hits and they it has been dominated by the Indians. It, talked about it earlier it wasn't close ball games. They have really press the Angels hard and this year the Angels have not won against the Indians they are 0 and 4. They're a dangerous team if they get in they've been there you know I, I spoke about it earlier. You know they've got enough veterans with enough really good young talent. 
that uh, you know they get in they could they could do something special. Two oh pitches up. And it's three and zero. Oh. Terry Francona. Highest win percentage versus the Angels in his career. Look at that 69 to 44. Red Sox would come in here and win a lot. Tony La Russa did obviously almost all that damage in Oakland. Earl Weaver back in the day. It's had to be some great matchups. Gene Mock and Earl Weaver. I'll bet you Earl yes. Weaver got a lot of those wins in the late 60s because once the calendar turned to the 70s and the uh, Bobby Gritch and Doug DeSensei and Don Baylor and all of those guys things changed around here. 3 1 Kipnis drives it left field hits it well Upton going back squares up makes the catch but not before the Indians score four runs and a messy inning a couple walks a hit batter and a three run double. So a six nothing lead going to the bottom of the third this past spring our own Jackie Redmond caught up with Jason Kipnis take a look and a listen. Jason Kipnis of the Cleveland Indians. Oh, what a stop by Kipnis. Swung in and blasted. He's about to take BP, and he actually agreed to let us mic him up. We got a microphone. I'm worrying about my brand, all right? I don't know how much longer I'm going to play this game. <laughs> Plus, we're going to find out what makes BP so important and find out just how superstitious one Mr. Jason Kipnis actually is. I got to think that the amount of stories told during BP is pretty high. It's kind of like the water cooler at a workplace. The barber's here when you're done. You come finish that haircut. <laughs> how much do you appreciate BP, or how important is it for, for you in terms of your preparation? Okay. Keep running. <laughs> for me personally, I like to hit outside because it gives me a feel for the barrel that day, the bat. Like, there's little situations that you do. Two get him overs, guy on second, no outs. Yep. Can you tell based on the vibe that you're feeling in BP what kind of game you're going to have? I mean, you know when you're locked in and you're like, okay, I still have it. But there's also the counter to it. There's people who have superstition where bad BP means good game. Are you mm -hmm. a superstitious guy? Speaking I think most, of? most baseball players you'll find are superstitious. What's your biggest one? I use certain different weights on deck circle. And okay. if I get a hit, I use that same weight the next at bat. And if I get out, I switch weights. Thanks for this. And we're going to send everyone else back to the game. We're in Anaheim tonight. Jason Kipnis and the Indians are on top by a score of six to nothing. In that piece, you could hear the, the great call of a guy that's going to be in the Hall of Fame with you, Jim Tomey, and that's Tom Hamilton, the great radio voice for the Cleveland Indians. And, and on a sad note, uh, for the city of Cleveland, for the NBA, for that entire region, Fred McLeod, the, the beloved TV voice of the Cavaliers, passed away late last night for Fox Sports Ohio, longtime Cavs voice. A lot of passion, a, a ton of fans, everybody in shock, and not only in the in the Cavaliers organization, but also throughout the NBA. And we wanted to pass along our best wishes to his family, to the Cavaliers, uh, to Cleveland fans, because that's a that's a huge, huge loss. He and Austin Carr on Fox Sports Ohio. Yeah, such a, a terrific team. Fred Very, McLeod will will be missed. Very well respected and. Uh, you know, our heart goes out to his family and just a really, really respected man. Six nothing. Cleveland on top. Anthony Benboom at the plate. And Zach Plesak, as Mark Langston said uh, about an inning ago, pitching like a guy that has a lead. At the time it was two nothing. Now it's six nothing. And and certainly for Plesak. And the Indians an opportunity here to nail down another win looking for their 85th win of the season and keep uh, keep on the incredible ride that they started in early June because they, this is not a season that started out well they open at 29 and 30 and Cleveland's gone 55 and 31 since. Yeah, and it seems like that's comes year after year for the Cleveland Indians. 
in the hole Lindor backhands nifty picks nice and throw and he got him. He was playing over the middle. That ball had some English on it. But no problem for Lindor. Two of the best shortstops in the game of baseball in this game here tonight Lindor with a fancy play. This is a backhand that he just grabs and knows he's got to get rid of it quickly. He does on the move. Doesn't have time to set his feet but has plenty on this throw to get Bamboo. Top of the order now with Goodwin and Fletcher behind him. We told you at the outset for Lindor and the Indians big night tonight. They moved within half a game of Oakland in the wild card. They moved within five of the Twins in the Central. That's the the good news is that they're up by a score of six to nothing. If you're an Indians fan, Goodwin takes the strike. The bad news is Oakland has a 20 to five lead over Houston. That's wow. in the bottom of the eighth. Minnesota shut out Washington five to nothing. However. The Rays who lead the wild card and you pick up ground on anyone you can pick up ground on. The Rays are tied 3 3 in the top of the 10th in Arlington against the Rangers. So there's hope for the Indians. There's your wild card standings. Rays, A's have won. I could get a lot tighter here after this ball game. You know, I, I misspoke. I said the A's had won. It's 20 to 5, so I feel comfortable in projecting a winner out of the Houston primary. <laughs> 20 runs on 24 hits for Oakland. I'll tell you, those three teams in the wild card, the Rays, A's, and this Indians team, what a fundamentally sound clubs all three of them are. They pitch well, they catch the ball, they've got good athleticism, young kids in the minor leagues that come up, and it's 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 going to go down. Personally, I think it's going to go down to the wire myself. Lindor with almost the exact same play for the first out for the second. You know, the guys, look, you you follow baseball and the American League specifically. Here's Fletcher, and he takes in. One of the unique things about the wild card this year with the with four or five teams that are use the word you want to use rebuilding, rebooting, or whatever. There's a lot of wins to be had. So you win 88, 89 games. That's not getting you into the wild card. You have to get into the mid 90s, it feels like, to get one of those wild cards because there are so many teams. Four teams probably are going to lose 100. Five teams could lose 100 in the American. There's no middle ground in the American League. There's like one team that's near, near 500 in the standings. It's either really good or really. Not so much. Well, the last two years, you look at the Yankees won 100 games last year and had to play a wild card game. That's pretty tough to do when you win 100 games. And that and that's what's hap that was is what happens when you have five teams right. in, in a league that are not competitive and are going to lose 100 or close to 100 games. How do you think we fix that? I don't know. That's a, that's a great question. How, how do you make. How do you. Fletcher is out. The puzzle is this. How can teams improve themselves without losing 100 games for three or four consecutive years. That's that's probably the. The answer to it is is figuring a way. Where teams rather than burn the forest. And lose 100 for three. Can improve themselves and get themselves. Back in a yeah. race. Well here it's six nothing. The Indians are on top of the Angels. Brad Osmus has certainly had a lot of injuries and things that he's had to deal with uh, this year as a first year manager here. Of course he was a manager with the Tigers on the Central in 2014. And he's down below with our Guy Haberman. Guy. All right Rich uh, three hit batters for Jose Suarez tonight. What's the challenge for a young pitcher pitching inside in the big leagues. Well the big challenge is when you do hit someone don't let it affect you. You know he, he's clearly just trying to establish in not trying to hit any of those batters. Uh, he's just a young kid trying to learn this level. David Fletcher on base again early today. He's been fantastic this year at his first full season. What do you like about him. Well I think everyone loves the grittiness. He's kind of a blue collar player plays anywhere. Uh, any of the three infield positions can stick him in left field or right field. We have to. Uh, he's kind of a America's underdog. You've been behind the plate for Albert Pujols. Now you manage him. 
five home runs away from tying Willie Mays for fifth all time. What's this experience been like for you? Much better than facing him when I was behind the plate. Brad, thank you. All right. Rich. All right, thank you, Guy. Thank you uh, to Brad Osmus on a night where he's down 6 nothing. It's one of the cool things we do get here on these uh, YouTube games is the access to managers for long form interviews instead of the one question or so and a live interview. Terry Francona coming up as well. All right, your MLB game of the week live on YouTube. Look at these matchups. Braves at Nationals on Friday. Rays at Dodgers next Tuesday. Cardinals at Diamondbacks on Wednesday. All important games. The Rays, of course, American League wild card leaders. Nationals having a great year. So are the Braves. And the Diamondbacks have been resurgent. The Cardinals look like they're postseason bound. Well, you get to this time of the year, boy, every game seems like it has the importance. And those games right there that are coming up are all pretty big ball games to finish this season off. A kid from the Cardinals, Jack Flaherty, he's really, really turned a corner. He, has he put himself in Cy Young candidacy? I, I got to believe he's going to be mentioned in that. Yeah. I agree. I'm with you. The Angels faced him earlier in the year, and he is legit. As you can tell, pitching change for the Angels. No Suarez. Instead, it's Jose Rodriguez. And he enters here near the bottom of the order. Roberto Perez, Yu Chang. And Francisco Lindor Perez rolls it out to short Simmons to first now last night the Indians put six on the board and won the game six to two and it was the bottom of the order that did most of the damage Chang had his first career homer it was a three run shot Jason Kipnis went two for four Perez went two for three and here is Chang who singled through the hole in the infield just to the left of the bag at second. And now the full shift is on. They did not have Renifo over on that side in that first at bat. Right. They've, they've sealed up the hole, and that leaves Jared Walsh all alone over on the right side. And Rodriguez misses low. Well you mentioned at the bottom of the order doing the damage last night and for you to get to the postseason it takes everybody one through nine to contribute. That ball is hit high into the Southern California night. And there is Upton to make the catch. I was going to make the comment Chang looks like he's got really quick clean hands and when I say that his hands do more of the work than his body and his swing. And I really like that he's we call it you know being very whippy like whip the baseball out of there and I like his swing. He just missed that ball that's that was actually a pretty good swing. In years past traditionally Asian players were inside out swings especially the Japanese players but you've seen players in, in Korea and now Taiwan and he's a good example all of a sudden are pulling the ball and pulling the ball with authority and power. Well and you wonder you know for years did they teach them stay through the middle of the field the other way and what happens when you overthink that balls that are inside every now and then you got to fire a ball and pull a ball to let them know Langer you were you were one of the best pitchers that played this game if you seen a guy that you could take you know inside you you pounded him in we'll get to Mark Langston in a moment our guy Haberman is downstairs Terry Francona right now. Look at that 19 years as a skipper second on the active win list behind Bruce Bochy. Certainly a guy that's headed to the Hall of Fame. And with the Indians two time American League Manager of the Year and Terry Francona with Guy Haberman gentlemen. All right Terry you've told your team with 19 days left not to waste a moment. What about this group accepts that message. Well I, I, they they're smart enough to know where we are in the standings and just told them and said hey play the game and don't leave anything on the field. You don't ever want to go home at the end of the year and think oh man if I'd have just done this. So just just keep playing and then if we're as good as we think we are we'll end up where we're supposed to be. Is this more stressful or fun. Both. It's a good stress. I mean you wake up in the morning and you're excited. You have some anxiety because everything that we do means so much. 
but I'd much rather have that than be playing out the string. Zach Plesak gave up 10 earned runs in his last two starts. What about him allows him to bounce back like he has tonight? Well, he's a really confident young man. He's a hard worker. He he competes really well. He's only has three triple-A starts under his belt, so he's a little bit raw, but he competes like crazy. All right, Terry, thank you. You got it. Rich? Guy, good work down there. And Terry Francona continues to climb up the all-time rank. He's number 18. He just passed Mike Socia. Jim Leland's man I, I thought Lou Pinello was going to get to the Hall of Fame this year he missed on that new committee's uh, vote by just one vote and I'm hopeful that in three four years sweet Lou is in in Cooperstown where he belongs I hope so too Lou's a good man Lou's done a lot of good for the game but facing him and competing against them all them years you knew you knew Lou always had his his guys ready to play. Here is Shohei Otani. Otani flied out in the first for the Angels tonight. Mike Trout still out. That painful foot in aroma underwent a cryoablation, which is essentially freezing the nerve around it and try to get that neuroma, which is a painful condition that can give you pain all through your ball of your foot down into the toes. Give him another day today. Hopefully he's back tomorrow. And Otani takes in. And Albert Pujols, one thing that uh, the Angels have done a nice job of doing, and Pujols has been terrific this year. He's having a great year, is giving him some days off. And that has allowed him to be very productive. Otani's going to walk on four pitches to open up the fourth. Yeah, one thing with Albert, there when he signed that deal with the Angels, I guarantee you. He never thought at 39 he would be having to get his at bats by being out on the field. But that's what Shohei Otani brings. Shohei Otani is going to get the at bats at the DH position. So Albert has got to get his swings by playing first base. And you look at the numbers from Albert Pujols, five home runs away from tying Willie Mays. We talked about seeing Albert and Jim Tomey in the locker room. This is a very absolutely unique little group that you are part of Jim that 600 home run club uh, very small and very prestigious group it is it's very special and to watch Albert watch Albert when he came to the big leagues and how he's just progressed he's for me I think the most impressive thing is the man that he is you know we can talk about these numbers and who he's you know behind five behind Willie Mays at the end of the day when Albert walks away from this game he is going to be one of the most respected men amongst his peers in the game. And this was last night. That's 655. Wow. He still has that. If you make that mistake on the inner half of the plate, Albert still has the ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark. He has not produced the numbers that he did in St. Louis, but he is still a force in this lineup. We talk about forces in the lineup and Albert Pujols is still one up and high chopper Lindor got one there and got two there that's a nifty double play had to wait for just the right time you know at 39 I remember when I got to be 40 41 years old it's you, you, you can't you don't do the same things you did at 26 or 27 or 30 you know as you age in this game you know you're going to see your numbers right. drop off and you know for me I think there's so much more you can bring to the ball club and look he's still producing at a high rate that's all the win win but what he does in that clubhouse day in and day out I think is so valuable. Here's Calhoun and Perez calls time because because Guy Haberman has more on Albert Pujols guy I talked to Sandy Alomar Junior about him today he was the catcher for the White Sox Albert's rookie year they didn't give up a home run to Albert even though he only had already had 22 by that point in the year and he was very proud of it but he said the challenge with Pujols is that you always look for something that a hitter is trying to do and then counteract it with Albert his head's always in the right spot his hands are always in the right spot and Sandy really emphasized his hands he thought that too many hitters make the mistake of starting with their base instead of starting with their hands. Good stuff. Breaking ball. Strike. Yeah, I think Jim hit it on the head. What Albert brings to the ballpark on a daily basis, his routine. For young players, you just have to sit back and watch how a guy that is going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer could be a unanimous 
Hall of Famer. We saw that for the first time this year. Calhoun gets into one. That's Mercado out there. He seems to catch everything these days. And he runs that one down. So Zach Plesak continues a, a one hit shutout looking good. In Southern California earlier this year Mike Trout was gracious enough to give MLB Network some time on his way to the ballpark to reflect on his career so far. We've done a lot of looking back on certain events one beating the draft which obviously you were the first player there for. What are some of the things that you remember from that night. Uh, it was great. Um, you know, obviously, it was a, I was a kid, so I was, uh, you know, very anxious, excited. You know, obviously nervous because uh, you know you're, you're looking for a team to take a chance on you. But you know, 17 year old kid out of, out of New Jersey, so it was kind of, um, it was cool. You know, um, you know, I was happy I went after it was all done. Um, you know, it was well worth it. I, I encourage um, you know guys to go to the draft. It's a great experience. All right, so you've been you've been teammates with Shohei for about a year now. But what's one thing on the field or off field that just surprised you about him? Surprised me. Obviously, his game's unbelievable. You know, you hear, you know, the talents. The you know, throws a hundred, hits the ball so far. You know, Shohei's the kind of guy that wants to be part of the team. Wants to be, you know, asking questions. Uh, when we're playing a game, he wants to be involved. You know, it's it, it's good. You know, good for the clubhouse. He's enjoying it. And I think he likes it so far. So. Who's the toughest pitcher to face? Uh, I think it has to be Scherzer. Um, you know, I'm glad when he was in, in Detroit, he got traded to the National League. So it was uh, a Scherzer. You know, I think the one of my coolest at bats was when I faced him in you know Nats Park last year in the All Star game. You know, the fans chanting ch ch Scherzer. He's he's battling. You know, he's the way he competes on the mound. It's just. Uh, you know, as a hitter, you're, you're up there and you, you want to get a hit. He's trying to strike you out. It's uh, it's pretty pretty impressive. I think he's got the nastiest stuff I've seen. To get your eyes on exclusive Angels content, subscribe to their YouTube page now. Mike Trout not in the lineup tonight. He missed last night. Possibility tomorrow. Brad Osmus told us game time decision as to whether he'll be in the lineup. And right now it's all Indians. Cleveland has dominated these first two nights of the three game set. Six two win last night. Oscar Mercado pulls it foul. And they have dominated this series in recent times against the Angels. They're looking for their 23rd out of 27 against the Angels. It's one thing the the Indians have done really well this year is they have made hay against teams with losing records and the Angels right now are 11 under 62 wins against teams with losing records is the best in Major League Baseball. Now one could say that's good news. Certainly you got to do that. Everyone right. says you got to beat the teams you're supposed to beat. They've yep. done that. The challenge is they can get to the postseason. Now they've got to beat some teams that have the winning records. Fastball is up and they've got to do it here in this month of September because they've got a couple series coming up the Phillies and the Nationals. So two quality teams and of course the Twins this weekend that's an enormous series in Cleveland this weekend. The Indians took two of three from the Twins. Is that four or three games. We, we have a incredibly talented three. research staff and they are indicating three. Mike McCurry who is an award winning researcher confirms. Yeah you're right you have to take care of business the teams this way the schedule is laid out for you you've got to take advantage of teams that are struggling Indians have been able to do that this year but they're 10 games under 500 against the teams that are over 500 and there are a few of those little speed bumps that are in the way for the Indians to get to the postseason. Santana's up. He's one of the three that was hit by Suarez, although his hit by pitch was not nearly as painful as Yasiel Puig's because Santana had a pitch, a, a back foot breaking ball that actually hit his back foot and kind of glanced off of it. Puig got dotted twice, once in the backside, once in the knee, and that one is hammered, just foul. And the count is two and one. Nine and seven are the Indians against the Twins. Did not stick the landing. 
game of inches. Santana, the 33 year old Dominican. Sometimes you have to go away for a year to realize how comfortable you were and and get back into a free agent uh, with the Phillies. Well, I think I think environment means so much. Yeah he stepped away went into uh, went to Philadelphia and then coming back I think you know he probably in a lot of ways you know coming back he was confident he knew the organization and that's probably played a big part in his success and that he's happy. You know, happiness is big. So Puig is getting booed here for being hit twice. Well, all those years with the Dodgers, this is Angel Country, so Puig has never been a fan <laughs> in this ballpark. And a strike. And speaking of environment, it's this is a challenge for Puig now into the American League. That's a totally different environment than, right. than he's been in. Of course, a long time with the Dodgers and a brief stay with the Reds. Fastballs up from Jose Rodriguez, who took over for Suarez. This is inning number two. Angels had to use their bullpen extensively last night. They've been using their bullpen a lot all season long. It's just been a tough year in the far as the rotations concerned. They've had all kinds of issues early in the season. They had rotation problems. Obviously the tragic passing of Tyler Skaggs in their rotation uh, has been a big factor and they've had to fill it. They filled it with a lot of young guys who have not been able to go deep in the game. So what that does is put a lot of extra pressure on those guys down in that bullpen. It's a perfect pitch. And it's two and two. So, So two two now three two you're kind of in fight mode you know you really you know you're two oh one oh three one you can really sit and get the ball up front two two three two you kind of got to pick the ball up and then react use your hands it's a great take by Puig you saw it outside of the strike box and this has been the painful night for Yasiel Puig that was the second of two. That one was off the knee. Given hit in the backside in his first at bat. And, and Jim, I was going to bring it up. What's it like? What, you've obviously been hit a few times in your career. After you get hit maybe twice in a game, when you get up there, it, it, what's that third at bat? What's that yeah. at bat? Yeah, I mean, you've got to have yeah. a little adrenaline going when you get there. Is Can you be? A well, it's a great point. I mean, I was. We were, it's funny you say that because your third at bat after getting hit twice, you're probably a little gun shy. Yeah, I'll be honest. You know, it's you're facing a new pitcher, and uh, you know, again, nobody likes to be hit, and you got to establish the ball inside as a pitcher, but as the hitter, it's not fun to take a ball off the kneecap and the back of you know your spine as he did in the first at bat. So. But as a hitter you got to eliminate that and motivate yourself and to and lock into the moment and put that chip on your shoulder and go get them. Here is Reyes now who has the big hit of the night a three run double in the third. Jim Tony was hit 69 times in the big leagues. Puig now with two tonight 43 times in his career. And Reyes takes a strike. I still one of the, the to me the most astounding hit by pitch stats. I worked so for a long time with just an incredible guy, great analyst, Tommy Hutton, Philly, longtime Philly was a Dodger, never was hit in his major league career, never got hit, 
and and Tommy will tell you it's because he didn't scare anybody. So <laughs> <laughs> they were happy to see him come to the play. But but he had some really nice years. He was a terrific pinch hitter late in his career as well with the Expos and the Blue Jays. So some guys are just ball magnets. How many guys did you hit? Uh, if you had to guess. I'm waiting for that stat to be presented in front of me. Yeah. I have no idea. But I'm shocked that that's you haven't you were hit just that number because I thought you would have been hit a lot more as much as you were on top of home plate. Yeah. That to me as a pitcher when I saw a guy standing on top of home plate. I, my target was your hands. I would yeah. go right yeah. after you right on your hands because I, I need to see that Langer 46 times. OK. OK. And how many times did he hit Don Baylor. Ooh. Four. I remember I remember two in one game and I was just hoping he went to first base and didn't pick up the infield grass and pull me right to him. Don Baylor was <laughs> a Don Baylor was a great player. He was a great angel. Reyes swings and misses and the inning ends with a pair of Indians out there. Six nothing Cleveland. That's going to the bottom of the fifth. Now how quick can everybody react in the truck. We wanted to go back and, and kind of go back into history and see some Yasiel Puig. Some of his low lights this year. Now Puig. Now the, the Reds are a team that and this is with Puig against the city of Pittsburgh. <laughs> the Reds were ball magnets early. Derek Dietrich is a, is a modern day Don Baylor. He gets hit a lot. Then on July 30th. The uh, Pirates Reds with Amir Garrett going uh, one on the entire city of Pittsburgh. Puig had been traded but still was in uniform for whatever reason and he came out ready to roll. Can you imagine what the Indians front office was thinking when they were watching that and they had just pulled off that three way trade. Puig was going to be in the middle of the lineup and there he is. Right. Right. <laughs> we just traded for that guy. What's Wait he on the field like, for? No, Wait don't. <laughs> well, that shows you the passion of Puig, and there's no doubt about it. We talked about it early. <laughs> he is a guy that he plays with a lot of passion. And there's a lot of things you see from Puig that you like, and there's a lot of things you see from Puig that maybe you don't like. But that passion is there. Uh, I've seen it a lot when the Angels and Dodgers have always hooked up in Puig is that there's he's always that guy that seems to have the spotlight on him. All right. Cooler heads will remind you that the MLB ballpark app will complete your next visit to your favorite team's park. Buy and manage game tickets redeem special check in offers. Find out how Yasiel Puig is doing today. Access exclusive content and much more. Download the MLB ballpark app. Today that's where. Jared Walsh's uh, home run went and sat for. A good deal of time last night up into the water. Here at the big A. And here's Andleton Simmons. Simmons fastball for a strike Simmons no doubt pretty pleased with the. Little League team from Curacao in their run this year is. Oh yeah and they boy can he pick it. Chops it to third. That's Chang fires across and gets a quick out and the night for Zach Plesak just gets better and better. Oh you can maybe, see it. maybe it was the scouting report that his uncle Dan gave us on the pregame show leading into the game. But he's uh, he's been terrific. Well you put six runs on the board that gives the pitchers a lot of freedom that uh, you have that wiggle room now. Now you don't feel like you have to make that perfect pitch. Now you can just sit back and kind of more attack the strike zone. If you look at what he's done from a pitch standpoint. 20 pitches in the first inning from that point on he is just really taken over and you heard Terry Francona talk about and, and Guy Haberman referenced this as well how young he is experience wise. He pitched at Ball State as Walsh is up. And he had Tommy John surgery before he arrived in the Indian system. So he didn't pitch in 2016. He pitched maybe half a season in 17. His first full season in the minor leagues was last year. He's made three triple A starts. And here he is looking for win number eight. You know the other thing is you know when you come to the big leagues whether you're a hitter or a pitcher. You can tend to rush. You know like whether it's in your wind up. 
or as a hitter moving forward. I think once you have great tempo and you can slow the game down it looks to me he looks real smooth when you watch Bieber pitch he's got that stride that just glides for me tonight I think please has really calmed himself down and he seems to be hitting these spots very well terrific athlete a wide receiver a good basketball player and he told me something yesterday that you hear from pitchers that have had Tommy John. He said after his Tommy John surgery that all of a sudden he had to totally rebuild and, and work back to his routine because you lose your muscle memory. And so you're kind of starting over. And he said that allowed him to really tighten up his mechanics. And we can't have a, a Zach Fleasack star with a little <laughs> a little Dan Fleasack sprinkled in there. A little left handed gas and Fleasack. At a baby. But you, you hear that is, is, you know, he took the rehab from Tommy John and used it to refine and tighten up his delivery, all his mechanics. He said his entire body got stronger just through the rehab process, not just rehabbing the arm, but part of rehabbing from Tommy John is you rehab and you're getting everything else stronger. And so he felt coming out of that surgery that all of a sudden it was like his mechanics were better. He had more strength, more lower body strength, more core strength. Renifo behind the bag. Santana's there, flips to Plesak, and how about that? Zach Plesak, five one hit shutout innings so far here tonight in Anaheim, and the Indians lead the Angels by a score of six to nothing. Speaking of starters for the Indians, Mike Clevenger can light up a radar gun, but what sort of velocity is he getting with, uh, with some objects that aren't quite round? Let's see. What's up, everybody? I'm Jackie Redman, and today I'm going to be hanging out with Mike Clevenger. Mike Clevenger just pumped a fastball right by, just straight cheddar. And we're going to put those pitching skills to the test. Do you want to have some fun with the radar gun? Always. What's the weirdest object that you've ever tried to throw really hard? Ripped a couple shoes at some roommates before. Oh, Over wow. what? Video games, usually. So what do we got first? Shoe. Oh. Over On a under. Shoe? Yeah. I'm gonna go 39. This might just be my season. I need some new belief. 57. All right, next up. Okay, you ever play football? Yes. What position? Quarterback. Oh, I've got to give me a guess. I'm gonna go 60. College quarterback, he put his town on the map. 52. How good of a quarterback were you? Not good. You ready for your next one? I'm ready. I want something weird this time. Mm, I don't think it's much weirder than this. What's your strategy here with the banana? It's like a spear this way. <laughs> What's speed? 70. You want a banana? 62. This is where the fun starts. Okay, what's next? Okay, grapefruit. We need it to hit something and explode. Like, can we get a target? Oh, we got a target. Oh, no! Oh, knocked it over! 63. This was really fun. Did yeah. you have fun? I had fun. Thank Thanks you for this. Me. Appreciate it. Back to the game. Thankfully for all of us here at MLB Network and YouTube, there was no arm injury involved <laughs> in throwing a grapefruit. He came out. Uh, he wasn't throwing full out and uh, happy to report. Or the banana. Yes. All right. In the postseason chase, every play matters. The MLB at bat app delivers with live baseball and your favorite devices. Follow the race to the postseason. Clinch it with the all kinds of pitch tracking video highlights up to the moment standings and more. That's MLB at bat today. And this of course is a national exclusive game on YouTube. There's three more of those coming up here in the month of September and they are a terrific game next Tuesday. Rays at Dodgers and one of the cool things if you're into MLB at bat and you've got the scoreboard there is a YouTube banner that pops up that has the, the match up the day of the game. So next Tuesday when you pull your scoreboard up big banner will show you Rays at Dodgers with a little button you press that button and bang the game's on. Wow. Just like that. Kipnis is up here. As Jose Rodriguez continues Kipnis Roberto Perez and Yu Chang in the sixth at the Big A which has been dominated by the Cleveland Indians of late. Kipnis pulls this one foul. Kipnis 
in the last year of a contract, though he does have an option. And he's a, there are a few Indians of decisions to make. Lindor has got a couple more seasons, free agent following 2021. Kluber has a club option. Mike Clevenger also arriving. One of the uh, Indian owners now uh, headed to Kansas City to own the Kansas City Royals. But the Indians have had an incredible three year ride into the postseason. Kipnis end of the bat. Didn't get all of that. Calhoun is there. And they're trying to get to certainly the postseason again this year via the wild card. We gave you the news that Oakland has reversed all that scoring in, in Cleveland. The Athletics beat Houston 21 7. The Rays have taken the lead in Texas 5 3. That game is now in the bottom of the 11th. And if you're thinking about the central race, the Twins did win today. 89 and 55 are the Twins. They shut out the Nationals. That's so the Indians have to win just to hold serve, it looks like. Yeah, keep the momentum going. Yep. Stay a half game behind Oakland. Right now, they looking pretty good. Up 6 nothing here. Top of the six. A little slow with the big home run and Reyes with the big hit down the left field line. Perez cracks one to short. You don't see that often. And Simmons has that great arm and the great hands to bail him out and get the out. There's two outs. So if you ask yourself, well, who's got the, the best schedule between the Rays, the Athletics, and the Indians, those wild card contenders, look at this. Look at Oakland. Oakland's got 15 games with teams under 500. The Indians are seven and nine. And as I mentioned, three with the Twins this weekend, three with the Phillies, and they finish with three at the Nationals to the Indians. The Rays are split at 500. But sometimes it's the teams that have nothing to lose that are the toughest to beat in the toughest of times, so to speak. You guys have both been through pennant races where your teams have prevailed and you've been in pennant races where your team has struggled down the stretch. I've spent more on teams that have struggled down the stretch than Jim has and there's no doubt you have pride you you want to make their path difficult to the postseason Chang into center fields and Goodwin is there and that's a pretty clean inning there for Jose Rodriguez who has tightened things up certainly for the Angels on the mound. All right, let's turn back the clock here. It's this date in baseball history. Hall of Famer Pedro Martinez in the Bronx. A spectacular complete game victory. A lot of the great pitchers have two great pitches, but Pedro gives you three quality pitches. Fastball, changeup, and a wicked breaking ball. Pedro Martinez back healthy again. Oh, and oh. a strike out. Oh. And the Yankees would like to have one of those out of the ballpark. High and deep to right field. That is not lazy. He crushed that. Good pitch by Martinez. His third strikeout. High fastball swung on to this strike three. Three great pitches, and Girardi is gone. I'm telling you. And Martinez down on strike. Six strikeouts for Martinez. This guy can make you look foolish at the plate. Change up gets Ricky Lede. One nothing Yankees here in the top of the six. Nobody out. And this one hit deep to right field. And it's going to be a home run for Mike Stanley. Pedro Martinez, who after the home run has retired 10 in a row. Strike three call, nine strikeouts. When you're up there against Pedro, you've got to be ready for every pitch that he throws. Breaking ball, got it. Another strikeout for Martinez. And he strikes out Lede for the third time. He really hasn't had a good swing versus Martinez tonight. None of the Yankees have. Playing in this strike three. Two outs for New York here in the bottom of the night. Another strikeout for Pedro Martinez with 17 strikeouts. 22 in a row to finish the game. 22 in a row. Little play by play there by the great Tim McCarver on that telecast. We are in Anaheim. 
where the Los Angeles Angels and the Cleveland Indians are playing game two of a three game set. Welcome aboard here along with Jim Tomey, Mark Langston and Guy Haberman. I'm Rich Waltz. Our MLB Network YouTube production crew here in Southern California. It was a gorgeous day. It's turned into a great night. Anthony Benboom digs in and fires at a fastball and fouls it off. Gentlemen, we've seen Zach Plesak now for five innings. He goes into the sixth. So far given up just the one hit and has not given up a run. And that hit came in the first inning David Fletcher. One out base hit and that has been it. A walk to Otani in the fourth. But Upton bounced into a double play. Brian Goodwin David Fletcher also do up. And a roller to first. We just saw a lot of uh, Pedro Martinez. Let's go back to the ALDS. Back in 1999, there's Pedro Martinez. Here's Jim Tomey. Now that was before the strike box and before. <laughs> Tough to hit that one there, Jimmy. Can't hit that. No way. We had a little fun at the All Star game on that. We uh, Pedro came up on stage and he explained his reasonings. I explained mine. <laughs> and uh, look, look, Pedro was. It's, he's a Hall of Famer. He was one of the best in our era, you know. And as McCarver said, I mean, he had three plus pitches. His breaking ball was so impactful, and the changeup. You know, moved down and away like a sinker. It was it was devastating. Now, before Pedro got there, this we we couldn't get away without showing that. Classic Jim Tomey. You were launch angle before launch angle was cool, my friend. That's that ball on the outer half, Jimmy. And you were right on top of home plate, and you don't pull that ball. You stay right on yeah. it and drive it that direction. That is it's impressive to see, and I. It was so fun playing with you in 1999. I was part of that 1999 team, and to be look around that clubhouse, that that right there was the that's probably the best talent I've ever been assembled on on any team that I played on. But you had an all-star at every position, every position, all-star. Jimmy was at first base, Robbie Alomar in second, Omar Vasquez was the shortstop, Travis Fryman at third base, David Justice in left, Kenny Lofton in center. Manny and right and an Alomar San, and an Alomar behind the plate Sandy Alomar behind the plate so it, it doesn't get any better than that it was special we had some great teams and you know what John Hart and Daniel Dowd and Shapiro did to build what we had I mean it was a great run there's Sandy speaking of Sandy great leader great catcher probably the guy that kind of kept us all intact you know he did so many great things I hope Sandy actually gets a, a chance to manage one I day because I think he's a he's a great human being but he's a great baseball mind. Well you've got Alomar in the dugout right now there is a look at Sandy Junior and you've got one of his battery mates up in the radio booth who's filling in for the aforementioned Tom Hamilton that's Charles Nagy Nags. One of the best. Talk about great guy. I mean, got, we got. I got personally. This is a great night for me. I got some of my greatest teammates all around us. Fletcher in a right field. It's a two-out single. Just the second hit. There he is. There's Charles Nagy, who makes his home now in uh, the San Diego area. Uh, area. I, I've got a great Charlie Nagy story. Well, winning is something that the Cleveland Indians did a lot of in the 90s, and so it wasn't a big part of what I got the chance to do. 98, I was with the Padres. We went to the World Series. That's the first time I'd ever had a chance to play in postseason. The next year, I'm with the Cleveland Indians. So we clinch on a plane we we lost our game in the daytime we fly to Chicago we we get off the plane they said oh by the way you've clinched the division 
Otani. And it stays fair. And a catch there. Luplo makes the catch. So six nothing. Hold that thought because I, I, I feel a post game party coming up for the Indians from that 99 team. Before we get there though Francisco Lindor has already made many memories in his young career perhaps none more so than his home run in Puerto Rico last year. So I went to Puerto Rico to do two things winning and I want to hit a home run. The whole entire time I was thinking you know just get a good pitch to hit and drive the ball. That's all I wanted to do. It's my first time playing in that field so I didn't know if I got it or not. I hit the baseball started running and kind of hesitated a little bit. I didn't know if he was going to go out or not. Then when I saw um, the outfielder hitting the wall, I looked at Sandy to salute to him. And then as I touched their base, I'm like, you know what? I'm home. To hit a home run in Puerto Rico, it's, it's a different feeling. Whenever I see mom cry, my heart is, is pounds. You know, my mom raised me and she wanted to see his baby boy make it and do something good in life. So all my fans in Puerto Rico, believe, believe in yourself, believe that you can accomplish good things and accomplish greater things. Don't worry about nobody else, worry about yourself and go out there and go get it. To see more exclusive Cleveland Indians content, subscribe to the Tribe's YouTube page. Iran Bithorn Stadium in Puerto Rico. I've had a chance to do games there, both Major League games and World Baseball Classic games. It is one of the most fun atmospheres you can imagine with the music and the dancing on the dugout. Just a wild, wild atmosphere. And look forward to going back there someday. Again, Francisco Lindor, Oscar Mercado, and Carlos Santana for the Indians. Yeah, that was a great clip of Lindor and how special that trip to Puerto Rico meant to him. And uh, it was there's nothing more better than playing in front of your family and for Lindor to have that opportunity and then obviously have that home run and that, that's a great moment that he will never forget. Here is Trevor Cahill. Okay, Hill in the Angels bullpen. Lindor to deep right center field. And gone. There it is. There is number 30. And somewhere, mom is crying again. A solo shot to open the seventh. Lindor number 30 doesn't miss it. This is I think this is a changeup right down the middle of the plate that he just stays back on and this is a no doubter Cole Calhoun takes two steps towards the ball and then just turns around and watches number 30 sell it into the right center field seats and that was a sinker at 90 miles an hour but it was center cut right in the middle right in the middle. You know he just does so many things well you know his hands are already in position to fire and it's really fun to watch how he's progressed as a player and a little bit of history here he's just the second primary shortstop in major league history there's a liner to left and a hit for Mercado Lindor now at 30 homers that's three consecutive 30 plus homer seasons. So only Alex Rodriguez has had three or more 30 home run seasons before turning 26 as a primary shortstop. And so now Alex who had five years in a row Lindor now with three years in a row. That's uh, pretty cool stuff. That's pretty good company. And now here is Santana. Now look I know that there are many Indian fans who have stayed up late and we thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Seven nothing your ball clubs up. Many of them want to know what the heck happened on the plane flight. After the Indians clinched yes. the postseason bid in ninety nine Mark Langston a long time. Mariner Expo Angel 
finishing in Cleveland. Am I, did I miss a spot? Padres. Padres, We're, sorry, that's yeah, right, yeah. World Series. Here's a roller. Fletcher to his right and safe. It's a good hustle down the line by Santana. So that's a base hit. All right, let's let's finish the story because I I, I want to hear. It involves Charles Nagy it somehow. Does. Yes, Charles Nagy, we just had a chance to look at him. And for, for again, for me, I didn't have very many opportunities to play in the postseason. So when we landed and they said we clinched, for the, everybody on the team, it was like, yeah, so what? Next, let's go to the hotel. It's like no big deal. For me, I was like, wait a minute. We've got to celebrate. <laughs> so we took the celebration. Everybody goes, you want to celebrate? And I go, yes, this is big to me. This is only the second time in my career. This was my 16th year playing baseball. Jim Tomey went to bed, I've been told. There's no way Jim Tomey was no front, way. <laughs> front and center as part of this party. Okay. So we took the champagne. We went to Charlie Nagy's room at the hotel. And by the time we left, that hotel room was unrecognizable. So there was champagne dripping from the ceiling of this hotel room. Down the right field line, that's pretty well hit. Into the corner, it bends, and it's foul. Now, wait a minute. Charles Nagy is as nice a guy as you'll find. I can't imagine anyone thinking that Charles Nagy's hotel room would be trashed like the Rolling Stones were just there. He's the nicest guy. That's why it was in his room. He said, J boys, <laughs> That's right. come on into my room. Let's keep this thing growing. And uh, it was such a fun night. And for me, it's meaningful because, you, Jim, you got a chance to play on so many opportunities to play in the postseason. But you never know when that your last time, if this could be your last time. For me, it was only the second time. It was certainly meaningful and uh, it was fun to have the boys celebrate and, and kind of uh, lift me up because I, I enjoyed every second of it. You saw, well, you saw that shot. Charles knows that he's on television. He knows that we're talking about him, right? He can see the monitor. But he, I'm sure he has no idea you're telling the I trashed his <laughs> hotel room story here. No. It was so refreshing to see a great leader like you come over and want to still experience that, yeah. which we all do. You know, it doesn't. It never gets old, you know, no matter no matter how many times, you know, and that's that's just so cool to have a veteran like yourself, very well respected. And uh, that's that's the best part of being a teammate is to to uh, to stay out there in the middle of the field. You know, the ultimate is the dog pile, they call it. Yeah. Has not been a great season for Trevor Cahill. You can see the ERA and right now the. Indians are threatening to add more. Lindor has led off with a homer. Puig, who has been battered and bruised and walked in his three at bats, hit twice, and he walked his last time up. And Puig's got a hitting streak going. He's hitting eight straight. He's had a really nice September. Hey, you mentioned Trevor Cahill. He was the Angels' opening day starter this year, uh, and it's just been a tough year. He's had a lot of. Issues as far as the rotation. He's lost his spot in the rotation, moved out to the Angels bullpen, trying to figure some things out. Little chopper towards third. Fletcher to second for one and no relay. Puig running well despite the sore leg. And a fielder's choice at the corners now. One out. And Jordan Luplo who's driven in three, including a two run homer. I can see why everybody loves Fletcher. Fletcher just plays the game. You know, even even that turn right there, you can tell that he's very polished. You know, he's a baseball player, and that's that's so great. He's such a valuable piece for Brad Auspice. He can play third base. He can play shortstop. He can play second base. They've actually put him in the outfield. He's never even really even played the outfield. And when with him out there, you don't feel like there's a guy out of place. He was making great plays out in left field. So he is one of those guys that understands that versatility is so important in this game of baseball in today. And David Fletcher has that. And he's that spark plug. He has that energy. As you mentioned, that he shows up every day. And you just can't wait to watch to see what he's going to do. You saw Greg Allen at first base. Allen came in the ball game last night, had a couple of hits. And he is pinch running for Yasiel Puig, Southern California kid, San Diego kid. Played his college ball at San Diego State and was recruited by and briefly coached by the late Tony Gwynn. Gwynn passed in 2014, and that's the year that Allen was drafted out of San Diego State. 
Luplo. A home run, his 12th. A walk with the bases loaded. And a fly ball out. And he's another one of these kids that all of a sudden, because of either offseason moves or in season injuries, has had to, to play a role. He's just 25. Been to the big leagues for parts of a, a couple seasons before this one. And Cahill misses outside just to put a, a cap on our our story of wild card and central division chase. We told you earlier the twins did win five nothing they shut out the Nationals Oakland with the Indians a half game back starting Oakland hammered Houston twenty one to seven twenty one to seven he said and then the Rays five to three that's a final and eleven Ooh. and another Indian gets hit. Luplo Cahill came up and in and the bases are loaded now for Fanmil Reyes and the umpire got got a, a pretty big piece of that watch this thing ricochet and got the mask of Bill Welke. Yeah, this is again a two seamer the arm angle it's a flat it just continues to run right into loop low hits right off that front left shoulder ricochets. And that is the third hitter fourth hitter hit tonight Puig's been hit twice Santana got hit and now loop low four times and that doesn't sit well with the opposing manager I guarantee you that no. Mislocation or not that is something that you are looking at going wait a minute. One or two you might be able to be OK with when you see four guys get drilled in one game at that, that brings your attention level to a different. Focus here's Reyes now. And he cracks one to center. That should be deep enough to chase home Mercado. And he'll come home. It's eight nothing now. Holding second. Is Allen and Luplo stays at first. So that's the classic guy on third base. Obviously, the bases were loaded. He gave himself all the great RBI guys, they give themselves three chances to drive that run in. I like, you know what? I think that was that a breaking ball? That looked Langer? like a breaking yeah. ball. Yeah, so you know, a lot of times you'll you'll take that breaking ball first pitch, one in a fastball. I like that Reyes was up there ready to hit to drive that runner in from third base he, and he stayed through the middle of the field. He has been I mean you look at some of the, the players that they've that the Indians have acquired in these trades this season to plug holes and uh, Reyes has been terrific. He's driven in four tonight his last 18 games he's driven in 21 runs and the Angels have a comfortable eight nothing lead. Kipnis shoots that one to left. Upton is waiting and he makes the catch. A lot of traffic on the bases and a couple of runs. First, a blast by Francisco Lindor and then a sacrifice fly by Fran Mil Reyes. Big night for the tribe and an 8 nothing lead. Seventh inning stretch here at the Big A. And of course, this, this ballpark has seen a lot of uh, big moments. The ultimate moment, certainly for the Angels, was back in 2002 and the 2002 World Series. And that's crushed into right field. First World Series at bat, home run Bonds. The Giants hate game one. Pitches outside, Santiago's throw to second, safe at second, over scores from third. And the Angels lead five to nothing. Popped up, he's got the Angels first ever World Series win two and one to Spezio. There goes Gloss. The pitch is lined into right center free of Salmon scores. Gloss scores. It's a triple for Spezio. Zeppelin is lined into right center field. It's going to drop in being waved around is Spezio. Game three of the series goes to the Angels. One ball no strikes to Bell. Swing and a drive up the middle of base hit. Here comes Snow rounding third. Hurston is a good one, snow slide. He's in there, and the Giants take the lead. The Giants win game four. So there was the 
loft in, and he strokes one into right field. It's off the wall. That'll drive in a couple. Jared Baker, who's only three years old, was standing almost in the direct line between David Bell and home plate. Into left center field, and the Anaheim Angels have come all the way back and lead it 6 5. Here's the pitch to Lofton. Fly ball, center field. First and makes the catch. The Anaheim Angels are the champions of baseball. What a great moment, 2002. See Tim Salmon a lot doing the uh, pre and post game shows for Fox Sports West and on Angels Television. Competing against those guys, they had some nice ball clubs. Ersty, Percival, you know, you knew as an opponent those guys were ready to play. They gave everything they had. It was nice to nice to see them get that. Yeah, big moment. That's their very first world championship, their only world yeah. championship. So well, we got a lot of uh, new faces in, in new places. Greg Allen is in left field. That sends Jordan Luplo. From left field over to right field. Upton bounces one towards third. Chang gets there and makes a quick pick and throw. And Zach Plesak has been splendid tonight. He keeps rolling. There is Luke Lowe, who started the scoring with a two run homer. And the Indians got a new second baseman. Mike Freeman is in there. So Kipnis gets the rest of the night off. And a reminder that MLB.tv is now available, lower price. $26.99 gets you every out of market season game live or on demand and receive access. At MLB at bat premium. Visit MLB.tv for details. Big swing and a miss there by Cole Calhoun in an 8 0 Indian lead. Calhoun trying to recapture his stroke. He is O for his last 17. And that would be recapturing your stroke. Down the line into the corner. That's where Scott Spezio went out in that 2002 World Series. Right down that little right field line in a big home run and with more on that World Series championship here's Guy Haberman guy. Well if Spezio's homer is the most memorable moment the second most memorable moment might be J.T. Snow saving three year old bat boy Darren Baker's life seemingly in game five J.T. hit 407 in that series but he's most remembered for grabbing Dusty Baker's son as runs were coming around home plate and uh, taking him out of danger. And JT's on a uh, golf trip in Ireland. He told me that that has even come up on the golf course there. It comes up nearly every day. Huh. Well, guy, I've got a question because that ball's in the air and, and out of play. JT Snow is now a, a television analyst, I believe, for the Pac 12 network, which you work for, right? That's right. And isn't Darren Baker playing in the Pac 12? Yeah, he just so, finished his sophomore season at Cal. Right. So has uh, JT Snow worked any games with uh, Darren Baker? He has. He, oh, inter he interviewed him. It was a very nice moment. They, uh, they, they relive the moment together. And then we got to talk to Dusty Baker about it. And his perspective is great because Dusty got in trouble, as you might imagine, that night. He took a very angry phone call from his mom after the game <laughs> and he was late to meet the media because she was yelling at him because she told him don't let Darren be the bat boy. <laughs> yeah that was a uh, that was one of those moments where you don't you don't at first you're like what am I seeing. Right. But uh, great uh, great move by J.T. Snow. I always uh, Compare J.T. Snow saving Darren Baker with Rick Monday saving the American flag as a Dodger. You know, running in, scooping, grabbing it, just in the nick of time. Right. And that is for J.T. to recognize that in the world. We're talking the World Series here. He's coming around thinking I got to score, but he also understands the significance of what is going on. Here is a young man that is going to be in big trouble. Grabbed it by the jacket so quickly was able to get him out of the way before a serious injury would have occurred. 
Andrelton Simmons in the air. Santana is there and he makes the catch. And what we're seeing from Zach Plesak is exactly what the Indians were hopeful for. And you know, in the scouting report that we talked about early on, and even getting at the scouting report from Uncle Dan on the pregame show, you know, one of the things that made him successful, Zach in getting here, is he's he pitched. And you know, young pitchers sometimes throw more than pitch, and tonight he really is pitching. He's really slowed down, and Jim, you pointed it out. He's really slowed down the mechanics. Sometimes his feet can yeah. be a little fast, but uh, he's ironed everything out tonight. I think he looks great, you know. And this is <clears throat> this is a big uh, big night for him because now this can carry over into something really special. You know, you give a young kid confidence that's got good stuff. Walsh has a great looking swing, doesn't he? The Georgia product bounces it right to Freeman, who is over there on the on the shift. And it's an eight nothing lead for the Indians. We're headed to the eighth inning. All right, gentlemen, Mark Langston, Jim Tomey, we all participate in the game summary. It's a tradition here. Let's do this, shall we? Game summary, lefty on the mound, Jose Suarez. Yasiel Puig. Yep, this is Suarez trying to pitch on the inside part of the plate, and he's made some mistakes on the inner half of the plate. You see that one right there, exit. This is an 0-2 home run that he gave up right there. That was Jordan Luplo, his 12th of the season. And then Santana, now that wasn't as painful as Puig getting hit, but that was painful. Puig gets hit again. And of course, there's a little bit of glaring, and Suarez says, I'm gonna drop the baseball here and and threaten you, please, Anthony Benboom, hold me back because I don't really want anything to do with Yasiel Puig. Luplo walks with the bases loaded. And then Fran Mill Reyes is a big guy, Jim told me. Yeah, yeah, and he he really is comfortable against left-handed pitching, and it showed right there. You know, any ball coming down in and into him, you know, he's gonna he's gonna put good wood on it and do what he did. All right, this guy has been all of that. Zach Plesak through six had given up just two David Fletcher singles. And he has been terrific. Now we go to the seventh. We move to further action. The Angels were unable to sustain a drive. And that guy's really good. Francisco Lindor's 30th home run of the season. I yeah, got a fastball right down the middle of the plate. Did not miss it. A guy like Lindor. Those kind of mistakes are the what he's capable of doing when that pitch ends up right center cut and for Lindor another 30 home run season for him. Terry Francona is on his way to the home plate umpire with lineup cards. Now this is this won't be as complicated next September when the rosters will be under control and you can't run 37 38 guys out there a night. Uh, he, he just wants to make sure of the changes. There's some changes out on the field for the Angels. It's like Matt Dice is now in at third base. David Fletcher has moved over to shortstop. We talked about versatility. He, that's what he's capable of doing. He just slides over. There are clubhouses in the big leagues that have to be expanded somewhat where you've got to share quarters with some of the guys that get called up right the planes oftentimes aren't used to traveling 38 39 players and of course next year that's going to be slimmed down considerably finally what are the number of players it's going to go to 26 next 26. year. 26 26 for the regular season, season. I believe 28 is the limit in the postseason in the po in uh, September September. I like it. I, I do think too. It's good. I don't it, it just doesn't ever seem right that when you get to September and you all of a sudden you are playing under different rules in the month of September than you have the You're previous impacting in a playoff race certainly for the right. last five months that you can match up so much better you can bring in different pitchers for different hitters yeah. in a very tight game. Yeah, say Otani, you know, if 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 Tito had four lefties, he could, you know, he could match him up, Every you know, from bat. the fifth inning on, right? Strikeout for a Cahill there. 
Cleveland Indian fans, thanks for staying up with us uh, tonight. Angel fans, hang in there. It'll get better. But here's what the Indians have remaining on their schedule. One game tomorrow night, finishing this three-game set. That weekend series is going to be huge and uh, a, great, a great time in Cleveland this weekend. Then you got Tigers. Tigers are going to lose. Uh, I think they already have lost over 100 games. But then you've got the Phillies. And then later on you finish with the Nationals. So those are that twin series the Nationals and the Phillies series. Those are obviously enormous for the Indians. Yu Chang. Foul. Sounded good. This young man has a real good swing. I His hands doesn't he? are electric. Yep. I mean. He homered last night to right center field. Pulled the base hit tonight. This one is to right field. That's well hit. That's Hermosilla out in right field. And he makes the catch. All right, Indians in the postseason under Terry Francona. They have been there four times. Won the wild card, lost the wild card game. Won the Central in 16. Of course, a heartbreaking loss to the Cubs in the World Series. Heartbreak again in 2017. You win 102 games, but lost in the Division Series. And then a Central title, their third straight last year. And they lost to Houston in three. They had a 2 0 lead in 2017 in that ALDS, but lost to the Yankees 3 2. Well, that sounds familiar back in 99. I know. When we were there, we had the 2 0 lead on the Red Sox, and they won the next three games. Season over. Lindor takes. That's the game we saw with Pedro where he dominated with six no hit innings. I think Brett Saberhagen started that game, didn't he? Saberhagen and then Derek Lowe came in. Yeah. And we scored a ton of runs. And then Pedro came in and said, and all right, Pedro that, shut us down. That will be all. Lindor takes a strike. If you're just joining us, thanks for stopping by. If you're just joining us from Cleveland, man, you've, you've been out late, <laughs> but we uh, salute you for hanging in. Lindor tonight has hit his 30th, and he cracks that one down the right field line and into the corner. It bangs around, and Lindor has double number 37. My goodness, 37 doubles, 30 home runs, 21 stolen bases. And a fourth straight all star appearance for Francisco Lindor and maybe he'll be part of a team that breaks this drought. Now take keep in mind that to be on this list you have to have played in a World Series and there are clubs in Major League Baseball. I'm talking about you Mariners. I'm talking about. Let's see who else? You Mr. Padre. Yeah. Well no no. Padres played in a World Series. I mean, oh, getting, that, that getting, getting winning to a World, World Series. Series. And, well, winning a World Series. Oh. It's been a long time for the Indians. Ryan Flaherty yeah. is going to pinch run for Lindor. Who knows? They get in this year. You never know. Maybe that'll stop. You, you just need to get in. You and just got to get in. They do have the pitching to really kind of match up, and that's what it's going to take. Uh, to me, it's it, we see enough of the Houston Astros. It is going to be hard to get through the Astros. Obviously, the Yankees are a force, but the Houston Astros, they are zero flaws with that organization and that team. Their rotation, they are as good as anybody. They're top three guys. And if you have three solid guys in your rotation that can go deep into games and all three of those guys are capable of doing that. And the offense that they provide it's going to be a tough path two words Hamate bone and. That's Jose Ramirez and, and his broken Hamate bone in the right hand now sometimes it takes a month sometimes it can take two or three months that's one of those injuries that you just it's hard to predict how quickly a hitter can come back and Jim told me you've had that injury. Yeah. Roller to third. And a throw across is in time. 
And when we get back, we're going to get more of uh, Dr. Tomey's <laughs> experience with a hamate bone. Eight nothing Indians on top of the Angels. We're headed to the bottom of the eighth. Jackie Redman is back with us. She caught up with Indians outfielder Jake Bowers this spring to break down how to properly celebrate a walk off hit. Pay attention kids. What's up everybody Jackie Redman coming at you today. We're going to be hanging out with some MLB superstars. There's a shot. Jake Bowers walks it off. So we're going to talk cellies today. <laughs> Let's say like you hit a home run. And a long one. High and deep to right. You're jacked up about it. Are you thinking about your celebration as you're running around the bases? I mean, main thing I'm probably thinking about not tripping over my shoelaces. Okay. Taking it a little <laughs> easy. You don't want to go too fast, but not too slow. You might not notice a good one always, but everyone's definitely going to notice a bad one. Every time I see a walk off and everybody kind of like jumps around home plate, I get nervous. Like someone's going to get hurt. For sure. Have you ever been hurt in that situation? Actually, one time in double uh, A, I thought it would be a great idea to grab the cooler. Didn't have the best grip on it, go to dump it on home plate, miss, barrels out of my hands, oh, and no. wax a guy in the head. <laughs> Was that the last time you grabbed a cooler for a celebration? Yeah, now I just stick to cups. A little <laughs> more going accurate. Like, shh, shh. And if you hit someone in the head, it's they're gonna be okay. What about handshakes? Like, can we maybe finish this interview off with a handshake of our own? Try to keep it a little bit simple. Just a classic. I mean, you can just give them one of these and then, you know, point. Oh, a, a point, shooter. like a shoot? Yeah. Okay. Or you can go like, just two times. And that's it. That was seriously awesome. But let's get you back to the game. Thank you, Jackie. All right, the official online shop of Major League Baseball is at MLBshop.com. Find the largest selection of authentic t shirts, jerseys, hoodies, collectibles, and more. And you can commemorate your favorite team at MLBshop.com. Where do you think Jim Tomey has all those? pajamas from he bought pajamas from all the teams that he played for in the major leagues <laughs> and was that eight or nine how many how many teams did you play for Jim Tomey seven seven I'm guessing seven we're <laughs> our, our crack staff <laughs> our crack research staff <laughs> right now scrambling and maybe you were counting a minor league stop or a, a stop that one day you were in the Mexican League. <laughs> uh, but they say six. I was six or seven. It was close. There you go. Zach Plesak is still rolling. And what a night for Plesak, the 24-year-old. You know, his last five starts haven't gone great. The ERA was over six. But tonight he's been terrific. On the ground, hard hit, nice play. Little spin by Freeman to get the out. Yeah, when you're scuffling and you've had a couple of tough starts, your bullpen sessions become more and more important. It's just like if you're scuffling at the plate, now all of a sudden your batting practice and some of the drills that you do have importance. The same you look at Plesak. So those side days that you are working on things, you're trying to correct some things. And we're seeing it tonight. You talked about it, slowing things down a little bit, getting on that backside a lot better. And he's been outstanding in the strike zone all night long. So with that, I'll ask this like as a pitcher with you know the need to use your bullpen to fix things what would be something you would have done to help yourself fix something first off you go to the video room and you find out you visually see OK this is something I need to work on Ben boom in the air to right and then once you recognize that that's that's you take that down and you begin to start breaking things down is it. I'm, I'm too quick with my lower half. Do I need to slow that down? Or it's the arm angle, the release point. Is where, Am I not finishing things? And, and so those are little things. You start in the video room, and you start breaking it down, conversations with the pitching coach, and then you get down to the bullpen, and then you start shedding wood down there. You've got to go to work and, and get busy. And a lot of times the bullpen session is just a physical workout where you get it in and you, you're done. And then there's times that where it's meaningful and you really are down there to try to correct some things in for police sack it looks like if those bullpen sessions that he's had in between it's all coming together here tonight. Brian Goodwin. 95th pitch for police sack his and longest outing in the big leagues 
And that's right at the uh, top of the zone and it was actually a foul tip. Now look if you are Fox Sports Ohio you're thinking seriously of flying Uncle Dan in for the pregame show in five days crack to left center and tracked and caught there by Mercado because Dan Plesak the uncle of Zach was on our pregame show tonight not only previewing the game but also previewing his nephew it's gone so well that you would think you know in they're going to call in, in, in Dan. five days they're going to call Dan yeah <laughs> that that shoe is going to ring there's no doubt about it. <laughs> All right, best lineups of the 90s. That's the topic here. That's an indication that we've reached the ninth inning of an eight nothing game. Best lineup of the 90s. Let's take a look at the competition. You guys were familiar with the 90s, right? So tell us best lineup of the 90s. To say the 95 Indians had a swagger doesn't do swagger justice. Cleveland loved that 95 club because finally Cleveland was the big bad bully kicking sand in somebody else's face. The Indians win. Unbelievable. Once again, a home plate celebration. Showtime in Cleveland, Ohio. He was Murder's Rose lineup, man. It was, <laughs> it was top to bottom. Kenny Lofton and Albert Bell and Manny Ramirez, Paul Sorrento and Jim Tomey. They didn't just like to score a run here or chip away. They like to bludgeon people. This ball is gone! The Grand Slam home run! The magic continues! The Indians win! And the season of dreams has become a reality. Cleveland, you will have an October to remember. Here's a smash to deep left. This ball game is tied. That was maybe a little bit of that swagger. Kind of all fed off of, and I think that all pumped us up when he did that. Oh man, oh man, Tony Pena on 3 0 sends everybody home. A long drive to right and tell it goodbye. The Cleveland Indians, after a 41 year wait, are in the World Series. Looking back, in some ways, for the folks in Cleveland, it almost feels like they did win it all. Well tonight eight nothing Cleveland Jake Bowers gets the at bat against Trevor Cahill here in the ninth the, the story has been twofold Indians offense continues to dominate against the Angels. This will be 23 wins in the last 27 matchups between the two. And Zach Plesak is back. And boy has he been masterful tonight with a three hit shutout going through eight. Here, look at the pitches 90 pitches for Plesak. 30 out of the strike zone 60 in the strike zone so just throwing strikes filling up that zone and that's what you hear in today's game fill up the zone work ahead expand he's done all those things change speeds. All right that's Plesak between innings. I mean you're always looking for yep. a hug and fist bumps and all of that. You're looking for the manager. That's the key. Right. Where's Terry Francona? But if Terry Francona shakes your hand. Your day is over. But Plesak's not looking for the manager. <laughs> He's not looking for it. But you, you want to avoid the manager yep. at that point. If Terry Francona reaches out and he's shaking your hand, if you're the starting pitcher, your night is over. His season high in pitches is 111. He's at 96. Yep. He's in the game. Staying in the game. I think he's coming. He's got back that. Out. What has he got? A towel on his arm. He's got a towel. He's just going down that. Probably use the restroom down there. A career high eight innings. And Bowers walks. Well, one thing is you look out to that Cleveland Indian bullpen and don't see anybody out there. So there's nobody getting ready, and he's he's absolutely pitching a gem here tonight. And look as pitch count is one thing stressful innings is another right. that, that is a, a real good barometer yep. and I think the most stress he had all night was probably that first inning he gave up a, a base hit and a walk and that's about it he did give up that double to Calhoun in the seventh it is Greg Allen now. Chula Vista Hilltop High School down in San Diego. OK 
Cahill trying to finish for the Angels. We've documented the, the massive number of starting pitchers that the Angels have had to use this year. Cahill opened the season as the opening day starter. And now Brad Osmus is just trying to get to the finish line with a lot of young arms in a season that's gotten away from the Angels. They've yep. dropped 13 of their last 17. This will be 14 of 18. It, it, it's just been one of those scenarios for the Angels uh, that they have. It's like the perfect combination. The days that they do get some good starting pitching or good pitching, the offense seems to not be there. And they've had some issues with runners in scoring position. Certainly not tonight. Plesak has taken care of that. But they've had some issues of getting big hits when they need to offensively. And certainly, you look at this game here tonight, no Mike Trout, no Albert Pujols in the lineup. That is big. When you're the opposing pitcher and you get that lineup card on your chair and you look and you see, wow, no Mike Trout. No Albert Pujols that it, it almost changes your mindset as a pitcher to I'm going to go out there and and really certainly the runs on the board for the Cleveland Indians helped police sack here tonight. But it has been a tough run right here to the finish line and the Angels have an opportunity again to make it more difficult for these teams that are trying to get in the postseason the rest of the season for the Angels. They played the Tampa Bay Rays this weekend. They head to New York play the Yankees next week. They finish the road trip going to Houston. The Yankees and the Astros are bidding for the best record in baseball. Not only just the American League, but overall baseball to have home field advantage throughout the playoffs. So they're, they're not going to catch a break the entire rest of the season with all the way the schedule is set up for the Angels. They are going to have tough games every night. They don't play anybody that is under 500 the rest of the way. This is their playoffs. This is their yeah. postseason. Exactly right. Well, the the ERA at over five, and as you pointed out, the very outset of the telecast, the frustration for the Angels is they've had uh, such a big, great slice of Mike Trout's career in one postseason appearance. That one peels foul, and the challenge is how do you build a team around a player like? Trout. Now you've got Otani. He could be a generational type player. You're not sure yet. We haven't seen a full season of uh, you know what, starting and hitting and blasting homers and all of that. But it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's two things. It's a great indication in baseball. It's not you can't just have one guy dominate the certainly the team and take a team to the promised land. This is the one sport or one of the few sports that one player does not change everything and it's proven here with Trout. Trout's been certainly the best player in the game of baseball since he's arrived on the scene. That is your starting point. You have a shortstop Angleton Simmons. Uh, he's to me he's the best defensive shortstop although we see Lindor Lindor is right there too but he certainly they're strong up the middle. David Fletcher we talked about him. He's a guy that's going to be part of their future. Shohei Otani is going to be back in this rotation next year. They are looking for aces. Otani is that ace when he gets back in this rotation next year. If he's close to the Otani that pitched last year he has front end stuff. Allen strikes out. And Brad Osmus is uh, going to come out with one out here in the ninth and make a pitching change. What do you think moves this winner? May they, you know, may they make? Like, what, what, what's your thoughts? Uh, I see them. They have to go pitching and go pitching hard. That that is the big issue that they've had this season. If they've had issues with their rotation, they have to fill that rotation. Now, guys, we talked to Brad Osmus today about this, and that is, with Otani, he's managing a player that is a hitter and a starting pitcher. Well with Jared Walsh you've got a position player and a relief pitcher. He did both at Georgia. He's done both in the minor leagues. They've used him pretty much in mop up situations. And so this would qualify as that. But you don't see this very often. Here, here's a guy that uh, homered last night and here right. he is on the mound and this is not a position player pitching which is always fun to read on Twitter that you love the, the emojis they send. Uh, this is a guy that has pitched in the big leagues. Right. This is appearance number five. His ERA is just over two. 
Well, also, you watch Brad Ausmus walk out to the mound. He walked out with a glove. He actually gave Jared Walsh a different glove. You don't see that very often with a manager walking out with a glove. I thought Brad Ausmus was going to finish this game off, but he ended up giving it to Jared Walsh, who was playing first base. He comes in from first base, and Justin Bohr now over there at first base. So and this is one of those deals where Brad Ausmus talked about this. These are the type of games that you're going to see Jared Walsh, not overpowering stuff, stuff that, that can get you through these kind of games where you don't have to dig into your bullpen any deeper. As we get further into September, three outstanding games on YouTube, the MLB Game of the Week Live on YouTube. Braves and Nationals, that's uh, coming up on Friday. And then next Tuesday, Rays at Dodgers. And then Wednesday, Cardinals at Diamondbacks, Wednesday, September 25th. It's the remaining schedule, MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. I would think, I mean, one of the hard things for a relief pitcher who's not used a lot is when do you throw a bullpen? When do you air it out and try to stay sharp? Equally so for this guy right. because, you know, when the, when the game starts, he's on the lineup card in two places as the position players and as a reliever. You know, th this is again, this is one to me one of the things that really impresses me about Shohei Otani because Jim you can attest to it. I can attest to it from the pitching side of it. You can attest to it from the hitting side. It's hard to do one facet of this game to do your prep no doubt. Work, get yourself ready to get in that batter's box and face that pitcher on a daily basis and then all of a sudden two days later you were doing the exact same thing on the mound and it takes so much practice prep work to get ready for that start physically mentally I, I, I was blown away by what Shohei was able to do last year I mean it is it's truly amazing when you think he can be that successful at both and you know I think the more he gets experience you know I've not seen him enough on the mound from an offensive end I mean he looks like he's got real good power to left to the center of the field and uh from the pitching in, I mean, he throws what, 98? Or does oh. he touch 100? 101. And you're, and, wow. and you're talking about Otani while we're watching Walsh, but then you're right. He's, he's so marvelously talented in both both phases of it. No, and just, again, the preparation work, to, to I know as a, as a starting pitcher, the grind that you had to do to get your body physically ready for your start is, is intense and to where you have to to think about the offensive side. It, yeah. It's impressive what uh, what Shohei did, and it'll be fun to watch him next year. And it, uh, I talked about it. We'll see if it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. It's coming back from Tommy John. He's been throwing. He's been doing bullpen sessions. Everything has been right on schedule. He's checking all the boxes. He's going to be back there next year. We'll see if it's the Otani that we saw last year or is it going to be something a little bit different. And it bat for Eric Haas. With one out in the ninth. Now we've been talking about Zach Plesak and the likelihood that he comes out to pitch and try to, to finish the game and get his first major league complete game. It's looking pretty good. It is. However, the one you know the one variable is if this inning takes right. much longer, then all of a sudden a manager might think, you know what, that's too long of a rest. Here's a guy that had Tommy John surgery in 2016. Sure. Let's get somebody up. So he's a, I mean he's happy with the eight nothing lead. He just wants this half inning to get over and get back on the mound. No question. Haas with a, a swing and a miss. There he is Zach Plesak. Right now a three hit shutout. As a catcher swings and misses Walsh gets a strikeout. And for Jared Walsh this is, this is a, a luxury for a manager to have a guy that's more offensive oriented than pitching wise but in games like this where you see a lot of times as you were talking about a position player coming in or using somebody else in your bullpen to have a guy that you can bring in 
and get you through this inning or maybe another inning if you needed it. It is it's a valuable piece. But Jared Walsh is in the big leagues because of his offense ability, not what he's capable of doing on the mound. But he's given you a little added something. We Absolutely. talked about talked about versatility. Can't be more versatile than going from first base to the mound. You know, and I think moving in forward in baseball, I think you're going to see more of this, to be honest, because of these kids' athleticism. And All right. Yeah, I mean, you're seeing it a lot in youth baseball. My son's around youth baseball a lot, so you're seeing a lot of it. Maybe that'll, maybe that'll carry him into high school and college and through the minor leagues. Well, this is going to carry Zach Plesak into the bottom of the ninth inning. Jackets off, ready to roll. And the 24 year old is going to head out and try to finish what he has started here tonight. What a big night and a big milestone if he can do it. Police acts night tonight. Three hits, no runs, two walks, and three strikeouts. I'll let you two take us through what you've seen tonight. Well, uh, yeah, go ahead. Lander. Yeah, this is a guy that. If we see right there has attacked the strike zone all night long has changed speeds and anytime you could disrupt timing you're going to have success and he's been able to put the ball in spots all night long you can see Perez behind the plate just holding the glove up and he's throwing it right to it hey he's had command of all three pitches he's got this little turn in this little turn that I think you know what it does is it hides the ball to be perfectly honest right you know a traditional guy that's on the mound that does it traditionally you know as a hitter we can pick that up when it when a pitcher's out there and he turns that shoulder in he's hiding the ball back here somewhere so maybe that's a little bit to his success too certainly sometimes when you're preparing for a game or an individual you have a, a list of stories and attributes and things you want to get to and one of the things with Zach is he has maybe the best right handed pickoff move in the game right now. His pickoff move is dynamite. He's picked off six base runners at first base. That's a lot for a right handed pitcher. I, I, that is something that I was anxious to see yeah. that we haven't had a chance to see it tonight. Uh, and he has just been a marvelous job here tonight. He's really just handcuffed the Angels all night long. Speaking of a guy with a good pickoff move, I'm sitting next to him. Well, and there I've had a lot of work, but being left-handed, everything's in front of you, as you mentioned. Yeah. Look at that. There's a list for everything. <laughs> Most pickoffs. Can we? He's on there with three lefties. So that's just telling you that. Yep. For righties, look at that. And the only guy that has done any damage, and it hasn't been damaged, but has gotten on base, David Fletcher. Two hit night, two of the three hits. Fletcher takes a strike, and it's one and two. You can see his velocity. He's he's been really under control, and you guys have nailed it. His mechanics have slowed down. He's pitched, pitch 100. Squirts over to that right side. Freeman captures it, and Zach Plesac has an out here in the ninth inning. You think Uncle Dan is watching? <laughs> you can count on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's had that cup of coffee. He's That's ready to right. roll right now. That big old tub of popcorn probably right in front of him. This is his 19th major league start. And he has a chance to throw a shutout. Here's Justin Bohr getting in at bat. Bohr who's been up and down this year. Not a lot of playing time with uh, Pujols Manning first base and that's Boar's position. Boy, our, our crack staff of researchers are and we do fly in an army of them <laughs> led by Mike McCurry but they've come up with this note. It would be his first shutout obviously in his 19th start. Mark Langston tossed back to back shutouts in his 17th and 18th career start. How about that Jim told me. Doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I, I, and those start that was that with the Seattle Mariners. Seattle Mariners. Yeah. And did you moonwalk off the mound after? No, no, no. We'll just leave that one on that little topic alone here. 
Look, it's 8 nothing. I had to add a little humor to the show. <laughs> Boar swings and misses. And we do have confirmation that Uncle Dan is watching after putting in yeoman's work on the pregame show tonight. Zach has been terrific. Good life fastball there. Boar goes down swinging. And after reading that comment, maybe it was an adult beverage, not the coffee that he's. I'm sure it is. 104 pitches. Taylor Ward is the hitter for the Angels. He's another Fresno State Bulldog. We managed, uh, we mentioned Luplo, who's had the big night for the Indians. Jordan Luplo, two run homer, bases loaded walk. Taylor Ward takes a fastball for a strike. And that's still a good pitch at 93 on that inside part of the plate. Usually at this stage of the game, you are dominating the outer half of the plate. He knows it's a brand new hitter, still has to show him on the inside part. And one pitch pulled foul. Now tonight there is a, a social component to these games. We have the dedicated uh, conversations with MLB fans, Indians fans, Angel fans, and all of that. The, we picked the best one of the night. And the best one of the night came from Sports Gaming Universe, I don't, whoever they are, saying, I vote for more Jim Tomey in the booth moving forward, please. Amen. To left field and deep, Ward hits one off the wall. Allen slides against the wall to get it, and Ward dives in for a base hit. That is a nice play by Allen where this ball, he gave it maximum effort. Slides at the base of the wall and traps this. And this looked like a routine double once it gets over his head. You think this is going to be a cruise double? Certainly, Taylor Ward thought it was. He was not running hard. And then Allen throws it right on the money. And this becomes a bang bang play at second base. You talk about playing all out for your teammates. Up that, eight, nothing. Absolutely. And that's how you should play. But it's noticeable two outs in the ninth. And you're laying out against the wall. It's pretty impressive. Matt Feiss is getting the at bat now for the Angels. Police act trying to finish. There is action in the Indians pen. You really have to at this point just in case yep. this inning unravels or continues on and, and the pitch count gets up. Well, I think if there's a run scored the night for police act will be over. Yeah. This is he's out there for the basically the shutout or if the as you mentioned the pitch count it's now at 109. You know this could be something too to look back on you know saving their bullpen when you get this late in the year and you can save your bullpen moving forward you know this might be something that helps Cleveland get in. And then he gets to two strikes on Thice. And you just don't see this very often in today's game very few guys are finishing what they start oh and two some Indian fans here right now Indian Indian fans are, are everywhere around this country but they're on their feet and out in numbers this is impressive and they're on their feet Check swing in the dirt. Did not go. Four hit shutout. 111 pitches. Stay tuned. We've got a, a big post game show coming up. We'll go down on the field. We'll try to get uh, maybe maybe Zach Plesak will join us. We could we could have Dan on the pregame show and Zach on the post game show. <laughs> that would be a nice touch. Our guy Haberman will be down there. We'll have a chance as well up here to visit. One two coming. Now this is that situation for this game is, is pretty much decided. But for Terry Francona it's not. He still has to pay attention to his youngster out on the yes. mound. This is where his big decision is going to come into play right here. And that last pitch is 112th and that is a new career high for Zach Plesak. So that's what he has to pay attention to. Even though this game is lopsided, Indians up 8 nothing. he has to pay attention to how far am I going to let this youngster go? 1 2. 
And it's out. It's two balls and two strikes. Indians and Angels tomorrow night. And of course, for the Indians, they return home, and the Minnesota Twins are there for a big three game weekend series. Finishes a four hit shutout for Zach Plesak. First complete game, first shutout in just his 19th start in the big leagues. What a night here in Anaheim. And the Indians just keep rolling. Cleveland now 85 and 61. They'll stay a half game behind Oakland in the American League wild card. And our post game show here on YouTube starts right now. And this is the post game show. This is my post game show voice. Eight nothing Cleveland on top of the Angels. And how about Zach Plesak? Great work by his catcher as well. Roberto Perez deserves a lot of credit, but Plesak walks off. Having gone nine innings, no runs, the four hits, two walks, and five strikeouts. And the Indians win an important ball game because they're all important ball games for the Indians now as they stay five out behind the Minnesota Twins in the Central and a half game behind Oakland, who won tonight at Houston, won big. The Indians win big here, 8 nothing shutout. They've won two straight against the Angels, and their dominance over the Halos continues 23 of the last 27 games the Indians have won against the Angels. I'm Rich Waltz along with Mark Langston, Jim Tomey, Guy Haberman, as you can see, is standing by. And uh, we are waiting, the man of the hour, so to speak, and that's Zach Plesak. And he's ready for us, and he joins us now. First of all, young man, really fun to watch you work tonight. Congratulations on a four hit shutout in a pennant race. That's pretty cool stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. It means a lot for this team. We're moving forward just trying to build up on every game, every series. You know, we're in a race here and, you know, to be able to do my part is just, uh, you know, means everything to me. So let's keep moving. Zach, Mark Langston, your last couple of starts, maybe a little bit of a hiccup. What adjustments did you make for this start here tonight? I think just not trying to be so nitpicky with my pitches, living on the edge, you know. It, uh, I think before I was kind of getting too fine, trying to make perfect pitches, and then I'd be missing, just just missing, you know, and then force me to get back over the plate and damage would happen. So I think just this this past bullpen and this, you know, throwing progression we've been having moving forward, just really focused on good direction, you know, getting back to what I do and just pound the zone but make good pitches and sequence great. You know, I got to give credit to Berto back behind the plate. He's a superstar, you know, and – be able to pitch to him it helps me out you know and his pitch pitch calling is incredible so you know I got to give this one to him Zach hey Jim told me here congratulations Tim told me thank you yeah yeah was there one specific pitch tonight that you really felt comfortable because it looked like up here all three of them you had everything going was there one that you felt really good on you know, it, it was. It's been a hard time for me to really get get ahead of my curveball and land it for a strike the past few outings. You know, and I've been I was able to do that this game early, and it kind of just opened that up for me. Um, kind of kept them honest, so when I throw it, you know, you couldn't just cancel it out. Uh, I felt good with my changeup behind in the count. You know, and just pounding fastballs where I needed to, moving in and out of the plate. Um, you know, just everything felt good, so I just tried to pound the zone and make pitches, and you know, not let too much damage happen. This is a first here on YouTube, and and with. MLB Network because on our pregame show your uncle Dan was <laughs> one of the hosts on the pregame show and now you're on the postgame show which is really cool you come from an athletic family we know about Dan and we've we've seen video of him and we see him every night on MLB Network tell us about the rest of your family because you've got some great athletes uh, in and around that family don't you yeah no I mean even on my mom's side you know her brother was a football player you know and he was he was really good I got a twin brother who's a, he was a stud you know he Still is a stud. He's just doing his thing now. And my little brother's in high school making his mood, playing college ball. You know, and it's, uh, you know, it's just good, a good environment. We, My cousin Joey, you know, played college ball. You know, my all my family really were athletes. It's just kind of something we grew up with. Um, you know, nothing we, 
you know, could even take for granted. We just would something we enjoyed doing um, growing up and just making friendships and, you know, building off of those great, great times you have playing sports, you know, so it becomes something that I get to do every day. It's something I cherish and it's something I always, always respect. And, um, you know, I'm just a great honor. Zach, one other question that I have is when you showed up to the ballpark today and you see that starting lineup and you don't see Mike Trout or Albert Pujols, what's your thought process when you see that lineup? I mean, those are the two, you know, the top guys. But, uh, you know, you still got Otani in there and, you know, you got Calhoun and guys, you know, guys who do damage. So you got to be, you know, hold yourself accountable. You know, not to see those guys in there is, you know, it's it hurts me just for the game. You know, we want to see them playing. And, you know, I hope those guys get – or, you know, Trout or, you know, they, they start feeling good and they get back in ball games. You know, I think it's something special and he's a special player. You know, um, eventually I'll be able to face off with both of them. I'm um, looking forward to it, too. Hey, congratulations, young man. Terrific uh, four hit shutout. You go the distance here and, and now your uncle Dan can stop texting us. All right. <laughs> no, thank you, guys. Man. Thank you, guys. Way to go. Thanks a lot. All right. Zach Have a Fleet great Zach. night. See you guys. You too. You yeah. too. How much fun was that? Because you guys were on it. You talked about the adjustments that he made just watching it. Jim, I think you said it, that he slowed his mechanics down a little bit, and that really smoothed him out. Yeah, I mean, it was noticeable. You know, I think from any one to on into the rest of the game, when you watch the way he attacked, he changed speeds, and he, and he did it like – there was no hard breathing. His anxiety level looked under control. The tempo, we call it, looked great. And uh, look, look, he got some runs. So I'm sure that kind of helped kind of ease his mind as well. But it was it was a lot of fun to watch and watch him go out and do a great job. And it was great to, to be with you guys for my first time. I appreciate everything you did. He read the disclaimer and he got through it perfectly. Perfectly. All right. Now we'll see how you guys do on the highlights as this is a tag team effort. So here we go. And remember, it was Jose Suarez on the mound, and He and Yasiel Puig didn't see eye to eye. That was the first pitch Puig saw. Hit him in the rear end. And he paid the price. Jordan Luplo, pride of Fresno State, teammate of Aaron Judge in college. Hit his 12th home run. That's a 2-0 start for the Tribe. Into the third, and uh, Suarez was in trouble, and the, the hit batsman would continue. This is an, another Puig get back upcoming here. Yeah, this is the second time he hits Puig. This fastball hits him right in that left kneecap, and Puig says, hey, what's going on? You hit me in the back the first time, the kneecap the next time. I am not too thrilled by this, and he's going to get stared at by Puig. And certainly Puig's got to say something on the way down that first baseline he does and Suarez is saying hey I'm a young guy trying to throw the ball on the inside part of the plate still feeling my way through comical, yeah comical moment both bullpens. <laughs> yeah that's surprised me you got the bullpen lining up both teams to like what's going on here and they never came out but they had a good time right uh, together that was a, a bases loaded walk that scored a run Lindor we'll see him later in the highlights and Anmil Reyes is a big guy and this was a big hit this was a bases loaded double that knocked in three and that trade looks better and better every day and we get to the Zach Plesak portion of the recap yeah certainly when he's coming off his last two starts 0-2 with a 9 ERA you want to go out there and you want to set the tempo the offense did their job now it's up to you to throw those zeros behind it and that is what Plesak did all night long. Had great defense. He's appreciative of great defense. We saw that tonight. But he was just filling up the zone all night long, throwing strikes, working ahead. As we were talking about during the broadcast, change speeds. And that yeah. is what pitching is all about. Francisco Lindor. Number 30. You know, three years in a row. You know, we talked on the broadcast early. Look, this guy is the heart and soul of the Cleveland Indians. As he goes, they will go. And then you keep those other guys in the middle of the lineup. This could be this could be a team that gets in and do some great things. So the drama was 96 pitches through eight. Would Zach Plesak come out for the ninth? Yes, he would. And here is his ninth inning. This was an easy start. And this guy, Fletcher, David Fletcher, had two hits against him. Justin Bohr coming off the bench goes down. But then Ward drove this one just over Allen's head off of Jersey Mike. 
And that would be a double. And prolonged at bat against Matt Feiss. And he strikes him out. And Zach Plesak will finish with a four hit shutout, striking out five, walking just two. There's your summary. How about the Indians, man? They just keep winning. 85 61. They keep the heat on the A's. They're a half game back of Oakland. They keep the heat on the Twins. They're five back with the Twins coming to Cleveland this weekend. And our guy Haberman down below caught up with Francisco Lindor, who had a double and a solo homer. All right, Francisco Lindor, uh, obviously the smile is what we see every day, but this has to be uh, all time levels of fun right now in this wild card race. Yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a special month. That's what we all play for. We all play for for October and uh, we're doing the chase. We're chasing and we all having fun. We embrace in every moment. What's it like to see Zach Plesak? He'd been struggling a little bit lately. His first career complete game. It's a shutout tonight. What did you see? Uh, he was locating and uh, um, he was attacking the whole entire time. He was executing whenever whatever sign Perez put down. He he, he went after it and uh, he he has success. He has success. 30th home run tonight. Fifth shortstop to hit 30 in three straight years. You tie Manny Ramirez on the Indians list as well for consecutive 30 home run seasons. What does that mean to you? It's an honor. It's a blessing. Um, I'm blessed to have the health to be on the field on a daily basis. And um, I've been surrounded with a lot of good people uh, that have helped me throughout my career. And I'm blessed to 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 be a part of um, such a list. Um, at the end of the day, all I want to do is win. Is there anything different this year? This team is used to being way out in front the last three years in the division. This year you're chasing. Does that change anything? No, no, we, we're still having fun every year. Um, we have adversity. This this year it seems like we have a little bit more adversity, um, but we have a great group of guys that believe in each other, back each other up no matter what happens, and we enjoy the ride. Yassiel Puy got hit twice tonight. That's never happened to him in a game. Did you have to say anything to him in the dugout? It's, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. But luck, um, thank God he didn't actually get hit that hard. You know, they were just, um, they barely got him, and uh, he's healthy. So we, we, we get to keep him another day. All right, congratulations on your success, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Nice work tonight, uh, Guy. Now let's do a little stack cast, kids with the Lindor home run. Look at that thing go. Well, when it's a red line, that yeah. means that ball's going far. Yeah. Full extension by Lindor. This was a fastball at 90 miles an hour, right down the middle of the plate. A hitter like Lindor, those kind of mistakes end up in the seats. And for Lindor, number 30, and that was impressive. But look at these impressive numbers right here with guys with 30 or more home runs in Indian franchise history. Who's at the top? Our buddy Jim Tomey. Boy, Jimmy, it's been a blast up here tonight. Thanks, you guys. Sitting here watching you uh, do this deal and certainly uh, seeing some of the things that we've seen tonight from this Indian team. They are rolling. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Win number 63 against teams that are under 500. They are taking care of business, and that's what you got to do. If, to get in the postseason, you got to just, when the schedule lays out for you, you've got to take advantage of it, and they have so far first couple of games of this series and no Kluber and no Bauer in, in that rotation but right now they're they're pitching so well uh, Clevenger Bieber uh, Savale and now you add Plesak into that suddenly they've got the, the rotation and the arms I know Houston is a juggernaut but they've got the arms that if the if the arms pitch well and the bats swing it maybe Ramirez comes back in October this could be something, but this police act start is important, certainly, not only for him, but for his ball club, and he said it. Break it down, guys. What, what did you see? What did you like? Yeah, at first and foremost, it is attacking the strike zone. We're seeing the locations of that. When you work ahead, what do you do? You expand, and you watch so many times you're going to see in these highlights where Perez is sitting and where the ball ends up. It's almost right to his glove. Defense has always plays into a great pitching performance. He got that also. For me, it was his tempo, how he slowed himself down, and this little turn he does. I think the little turn hit the ball. Hitters had a hard time picking it up, and, uh, you know, good for him. You know, this kid's worked really hard to get to where he's at right now, and, uh, you know, I think he's going to play a big part into the next couple weeks here for him. Last rookies to throw a shutout. Boy, it's not, uh, not that common, right? Look back. 
Jeremy Sowers back in 2006 for the Indians. Billy Tabor back against the Yanks in 2003. And Zach Plesak does it tonight here in Anaheim against the Los Angeles Angels. Upcoming schedule on MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. Look at this. So these three games, and they're all big ones. Braves, Nationals, Rays at Dodgers, Cardinals at Diamondbacks. Lit the fuse on that bomb and let it rip. At the track, at the wall, it's gone. Acuna's tied it up. First big league hit is a game tying home run. Deep into the left center field seats. Welcome to the big leagues, kid. Seven runs in the bottom of the night. He's out at the play. What a play by Charlie Culberson. Oh, my. Robles kick it up dust in the alleyway. That ball is murdered to right center. And Donaldson delivers another golden moment for the Braves. That's going to be plenty deep enough to win it. And the Nets have shocked SunTrust Park. A six-run deficit has been sliced in half. Get one into the breeze and let it ride. Braves will beat the Nationals 4-3. His first hit as a National is a Grand Slam. Acuna sends us home with a 5-4 victory. Anthony Rendon does it again. Oh my goodness. Ronald Acuna Jr. with highway robbery. Key boom. See you later. Ozzy Albies has put the Braves in front of the 10th inning. Back to the chop house. Did he just turn out the lights? He did. Trey Turner has another walk-off hit. A lot of Bob Carpenter and Chip Carey uh, there going, right? That's, uh, that's fun stuff. So, uh, Braves Nationals, you've seen enough baseball to know uh, what you like about the Nationals, what you like about the Braves. Nationals have played really well, scored a lot of runs in the last month and a half. I mean, offensively, since the All-Star break, they've done a tremendous job at scoring runs. And what I love about them most is the constructive lineup. You know, you look at the top, they got speed, they got with Eaton, they got a guy that can bunt, and then they got MVP with Soto and Rendon. You know, it's, it's, it's a really, it's a really nice lineup. And that top three pitching uh, is also pretty impressive, too. With that being said, they're not going to win their division. The team that they're going after is the Atlanta Braves. The Atlanta Braves are going to win that division. With all those great things that the Washington Nationals have going for them, you have a very, very talented young team in the Atlanta Braves. They were there last year, kind of their first taste of the postseason. We'll see how they're going to do this year when they get to the postseason. Uh, and then you talked about it during the broadcast, seasoning. When you get there and all of a sudden it's the first time you experience that, it's, it's different. Once you've been there, you're like going, all right, I want to experience this year after year. I want to go deep. Deeper. We'll see how the Atlanta Braves respond this year into the postseason. Now you've heard from Jim Tomey. You've heard from Mark Langston. Let's hear from Terry Francona. He talks about his pitcher tonight, Zach Plesac. Obviously pretty good. I mean, the first inning was, I think, his longest inning. He threw 20 pitches, and he got behind just a couple of hitters. But after that, the rest of the game, he pretty much worked ahead in the count, got some early outs. Through all his pitches for strikes, I thought tonight was the best he's followed his gl the glove in Alberto, and his breaking ball was better. And I think because he he was able to slow down in his delivery, and, you know, take it from the bullpen to the game. He's been doing a really good job working on it, but he took it to the game tonight and paid dividends. Curry. Well, I know for Angel fans this wasn't a fun ride, but for Indian fans it was an entertaining night. And for uh, for us up up here, we had a, a good time. Jim, tell me, congratulations, Thanks, guys. Was this your first real telecast? I it mean, was. Really? Yeah. Had he read the disclaimer and everything? Mark Langston, always fun to work with you. Good luck the rest of the way with the Angels, and uh, we'll see you in the MLB Network Sounds studios. Sounds great. All right. So for our entire crew and for Guy Haberman, who did great work down on the field as well. The MLB Game of the Week on YouTube returns on Friday. We showed you a great matchup with the Braves and the Nationals. Coverage begins with our pregame show.
at 6.30 Eastern. Maybe Dan will be on that one, too. For Hall of Famer Jim Tobey, Mark Langston, Guy Haberman, I'm Rich Waltz. We're at Angel Stadium, our entire MLB Network production crew here on YouTube. Goodbye for now, and thanks for watching the MLB Game of the Week on YouTube.